temporarily chair of the Greater Cambridge Partnership, but uh, I have concluded my term. Um, and so, um, welcome everybody uh, to our meeting. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, we've got some important uh, issues on the agenda, and I know we've also got some public questions. Um, um, first of all, we've got a procedural business, um, and the item is uh, first election of chair. Um, as I've said, um, I have been chair probably more than is due um, uh, in terms of the number of years, um, but it was particularly important um, to keep continuity um, in the recent times. So um, there is a vacancy of the chair, um, and from the chair, um, as there's not many of us, I'd like to nominate Councillor Adrian Van de Bay to be chair of the Great Cambridge Partnership. Um, are there any other nominations? Um, I think we should take a vote on it. Um, uh, so, all those in favour of Aidan Van der Bayer? I'm not entitled to vote. You're, you're not entitled to vote, but. Um, I would indicate, I would have voted for this. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, any against? And abstentions? Okay. Thank you. Um, and then, upon the the vice chair, um, I, I would like to nominate. Um, ah, sorry. I'm no longer chair. I must uh, take account of that. <laughs> if I lapse into chair behaviour, please let me know. Challenge that, but 
did say they were working on, on reducing the emissions from their bus fleet and they promised, uh, slightly enigmatically, a, a major announcement in September. Uh, it's also worth pointing out from that meeting that both Stagecoach and the representative from Assenjar, who uh, is about to come with us, uh, both said that the biggest challenge to running um, uh, reliable and frequent bus services in this area is congestion in Cambridge City. That's worth bearing in mind. Paragraph 2.3, there was quite a lot of concern that public transport should be cheaper than driving by car. And when you come to consider that, that in the way I elaborate these uh, proposals, please bear in mind that uh, your unit of, of transport should not just be a single passenger, but a family traveling together in a car. Paragraph 2.4, and here was one of the caveats which came uh, from uh, one of our members in South Cambridgeshire, and um, couldn't quite work out how all the um, public transport improvements could be introduced into Cambridge City without creating some extra road space. So the, the uh, chicken and egg situation of demand management and uh, improved public transport was a conundrum and, uh, and the response to that was a, a, a phased staircase of, of approaches um, that will be uh, welcomed by, by many people. <laughs> 2.5, the Citizens' Assembly, uh, it, the Joint Assembly didn't hear very much about that, but welcomed the, the fact that uh, the Grace Cambridge Partnership would be chosen as one of the three pilots in the country. Um, uh, I think the feeling is taken that the Citizens' Assembly should be presented with all options on, on an equal footing. And um, paragraph 2.6, this was another caveat, that um, the, the city deal had been regarded by the business community as a shorthand for tackling congestion in Cambridge City. And here we were, four years down the line, uh, still talking about a set of principles um, and uh, uh, feeling that uh, perhaps we should go on with this a little bit faster. On the other hand, some members did point out that um, one of the benefits of, of uh, having gone and taken this quite cautiously was that quite a lot of momentum had built up and had built up behind the package that Race Cambridge Partnership uh, was put together. So while it was important to build on that momentum, it was also important not to push it too hard. And uh, one of the ways of uh, accomplishing that would be to uh, continue the level of engagement. You know, although I, I myself pointed out that uh, to continue the engagement at the level of the Choices for Better Journeys uh, process would, 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 would possibly not be uh, possible given the resource uh, implications of that. But Andy Williams from AstraZeneca um, threw across our bow at the very last moment that um, we should not end up with a situation where we come up with a great scheme, a great set of schemes, but it was, uh, it was undermined by irresolvable conflicts which uh, could not be managed. Um, I'm just going to augment this slightly by the fact that uh, I had the benefit of having a brief chat with Daniel Seichner this morning, uh, the MP for Cambridge. Um, and I uh, confirmed him about his points that he made on the Sunday Politics East show on the Sunday after our meeting. And uh, he made it very clear that if he were persuaded that a, uh, uh, a significantly improved package of public transport measures could be put together, he, you know, we could expect his backing for uh, demand management measures, including road pricing. And that was, uh, those were the precise terms in which he put it to me, and I think he better than that. Okay, on to the Cambridge South West Travel Hub. Um, the, there was a little bit of uh, argebargy between um, uh, the, uh, one of the members on, on uh, Cambridge Biomedical Campus and one of the uh, elected representatives as to whether this was just a glorified car park for uh, uh, AstraZeneca. Um, but uh, moving on from that, the, the feeling was that this uh, was a lot longer due improvement. Um, one member, uh, Caution that if we were taking nibbles out of uh, the country park, Trumpley Meadows, we should be very careful how we went about that because the country park had been uh, one of the key uh, uh, benefits to local people uh, on, on the basis of which the, uh, one of the Cambridge Southern Fringe expansions of, of Cambridge, urban uh, expansions of Cambridge, had been sold locally. And it was important for them not to feel that that was a, 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 of such a temporary measure that it could be nibbled away at uh, lightly. Um, there was a lot of concern about potential impact of this um, rural travel hub, must get the terminology right, 
on the, on the communities along the A10 and uh, the interrelation with uh, any potential travel hub at Boston, uh, something to bear in mind. Item four, the South East Transport Study. Um, I'm, I'm just checking in the here. Oh, Gary, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, you, have, do you, have, coming, yeah. you do have Tony Audrey coming, in which case I won't, I won't uh, repeat anything he's likely to, to say to you in that case. Um, again, a general feeling that this is a, a, a scheme of, of, uh, of strategic importance to the Greater Cambridge area, um, and that um, uh, while there were some question marks as to precisely how accessible Grant Park and Brigham Research Institute would be from the, uh, the, the potential alignment, uh, that it would nevertheless uh, be a significant improvement in access uh, for those two sites. Item five, the Cambridge Rail Corridor Study. Um, there, were, there were quite a lot of concern that this didn't take into account the sort of level of growth uh, to which we aspire locally. Uh, the, the, the way in which these studies have to be done, they need to follow the uh, Treasury Green Book uh, process in business cases. We had managed to get them to, to look at uh, a slightly uh, faster growth rate, but not the one uh, envisaged in Cambridge and Peterborough Independent Economic Review, and never mind the one in the National Infrastructure Commission uh, Oxford Cambridge uh, Arc study. Um, one member was particularly anxious that there was no mention of any uh, station at Cherry Hinton or Fulborn, which was at least in the previous local transport plan for the Cambridge County Council. Uh, a lot of uh, concern about that line, actually, that it seemed to be considered as an afterthought, um, and that uh, a view was taken that if there was a, a service on that line as good as the service between Ely and Cambridge, then you know, the patronage uh, from the new market uh, side of things would be uh, of a similar level. Um, again, the, the Cambridge Biomedical Campus, um, uh, though you're representing um, uh, organisations on there, uh, were, were at pains to uh, stress that uh, for, for the Greater Cambridge area, the, the, the most important project of all was Cambridge South Station. That's taken the red in the Cambridge Rail Corridor Service, it's not that much use to us. Um, and again, if I throw what meant this on the, on the uh, on the information received this morning, because uh, the mayor of Cambridge and Peterborough was at uh, the Common Stance of Cambridge Corridor Conference, and, and he had, uh, you know, uh, said how, how he, he just took exception to the notion that uh, Britain was open for business when our major infrastructure project seems to take so long, and he singled out Cambridge South Station, which our current schedule is, is not um, expected until 2028. And of course, you know, the combined authority is, is doing a study to see if we can accelerate that, at least on a temporary nature. Um, it, after that, uh, Paul Kitson from Crows England said, well, OK, um, you, you may be impatient about some of these infrastructure improvements, but actually, the, the Great Cambridge area is ahead of the game because uh, just look at what you have achieved locally with the, with the busway to, to Huntingdon and the Cambridge North Station. And you should take comfort and take heart from the fact that you have already achieved some infrastructure uh, projects uh, and uh, you shouldn't be frightened of it at all at all. And then finally, the quarterly progress report. I think the thing to, that I would want to highlight here is the um, this, where we discussed the con possible contributions that uh, British Cambridge Partnership might make towards the um, uh, business case, the outline business case for the Cambridge Autonomous Metro. And um, there was a feeling that uh, in return for any contribution, the Greater Cambridge Partnership should expect uh, greater influence in the process. Um, and uh, the business representatives on the, on the assembly were anxious that uh, in, in their line of work, they would never hand over money without some assurance as to how it would be spent. And they sort of looked to the board to uh, achieve the same sort of um, assurances before it parted with our, our well earned uh, funds. Please, Mike. Thank, Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, very useful. Um, so uh, we will um, uh, now move on to the, the first um, uh, item to item, which is the city access and public transport improvements. Uh, and uh, we have a uh, question on that, I believe. Um, um, Just chairman from Stacey Weiser. Stacey Weiser. Um, Sheer, are you? You're I'm 
Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Robin Pellew. I'm a member of the Cambridge PPF Planning Committee, and it's on behalf of Cambridge PPF I'm speaking. And this relates to um, the gender item eight. The board paper stresses the increasing urgency of tackling the effect of our pollution in Cambridge. Paragraph 57, paragraph 57 contains the alarming statistic that each year air pollution contributes to some 106 premature deaths in Greater Cambridge. In response to one of our previous questions, the GCP executive has said that any potential road charging, including a pollution charge, would be introduced only when improved alternatives to the car were in place. We can see from the various GCP project updates that such alternatives will not be in place until four or five years time at the earliest. We are assuming that this is why the GCP assembly discussion on the 6th of June concluded that we, and I quote, need to move cautiously and slowly over the introduction of demand management. It would, in our opinion, be grossly irresponsible to wait four or five years to tackle air pollution when we are now experiencing a public health crisis. So what Cambridge PPF wants to know is what the GCP intends to do in the interim. For example, we note that nearly 50% of our pollution is caused by diesel buses when we know that electric buses are a viable alternative. Surely the board must recognize the urgency of starting now to plan for the introduction of a low emission zone covering the central area of the city. So let's get on with it now with no more delay or prevarication. Thank you very much. Thank you. So um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask um, uh, Mr. Blake to, to respond to the question if he, if he would, um, uh, and then, then we can uh, do, uh, ask him to, to give a brief presentation of the report itself, uh, and then we can um, discuss uh, um, that the board can have a discussion on this, including, I think, um, uh, uh, our own responses to, to your question, if that's okay. Um, so Mr. Blake. Thank you, Chair. Um, I don't think we've outlined and given a fair reflection of where the Joint Assembly got to in terms of this conversation. There were a range of views expressed from um, we need to consider this carefully to actually we need to get on with it and we need to, to do something as soon as possible. The, the, the fairly comprehensive report that, that's before the, the board today um, brings to life what the key challenges are around congestion, air quality, and, and the sort of climate issue that, that we face. It doesn't put a time scale on, on or four to five years before, before we do anything. What it does do is to reflect that we need a number of elements to deal with this. We need to promote public transport. That needs to be a viable uh, alternative because people need to use that. Um, and that we need to, to bring forward a comprehensive package. The, the board will be aware that we are already engaging in electric bus pilot uh, in partnership with Stagecoach. We've invested heavily in electric charging uh, across the Greater Cambridge area and we're, we're looking at power infrastructure uh, options across the area. So, so I think it's fair to say that we are engaged in this topic already. What hopefully the, 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 the board paper will bring out is just the need for the next steps that, 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 that need to be considered or hopefully around my own Okay. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so now, now we'll move on to the, um, the, the report itself. Uh, um, Mr. Blake, would you like to uh, say a few words to introduce the report? Uh, thank you, Chairman. I mean, this, is, this is a comprehensive report, so I'm, I just want to give a bit of a flavour to it. And if I may, I'll, I'll come to the recommendations at the end. Um, so what it does, and we're very much picking up on the, the, the question that's been asked, it, it outlines the challenge that we face, the growth that is taking place in our area, the impact on our network of, of additional cars. So we are predicting 25 to 30% increase in cars and the, 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 the associated impact in terms of congestion. It clearly outlines the work that we've done with partners at the City Council around air quality and the air quality challenge that, that, that we face and the, the 106 uh, contribution to 106 premature deaths on, on, on an annual basis. 
Um, the paper then outlines what the necessary building blocks are to, to, to deal with that. So we get on to an infrastructure improvement is required, and we've got a number of the, the, the infrastructure projects later on the agenda, to, to begin to build that alternative um, movement away from the private car to promoting public transport, walking and cycling. The, the paper then makes very clear the need to outline a network of public transport services, uh, and I know the Joint Assembly you know, raised this and discussed this point in, in considerable detail. So we are working with colleagues at the Combined Authority and their consultants to produce a public transport network that is capable of dealing with the, the, the growth that we're experiencing. And as we've said previously, that broadly needs to deal with about three times as many people who are currently using uh, bus services as current, so that broadly doubles the uh, the size of the, uh, the, the the bus network and then the report goes on to say what are the challenges in delivering that both in cost terms but also actually freeing up road space there is no point in doubling the size of the bus network for them to sit in the same queues as exists today um, so we have to do something radically different to, to deal with that um, members will will recall that they agreed to to undertake a, an extensive uh, engagement exercise, choices for better journeys. Um, members will also recall that there was a, 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 an extensive questionnaire as part of that. Over 5,000 5, people took the time to respond. So we have a, a wealth of data in terms of the views on what the challenges are and, and, and what the potential solutions are. So paragraph six, six then, then outlines some of the headline uh, results from that, some views on what is, you know, what are the important elements of public transport that need to, to be improved? Um, very broad support for the vision that, that we've set out um, in terms of how we can afford and how we can manage the, 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 the revenue costs and, and managing the demand for transport. A mixture of views in terms of what the options uh, really are, but, but actually broad support for, for pollution based, um, a pollution based uh, measure charging measure, but, but recognising that there, there, there are some ups and downs with that, particularly what about its longevity uh, beyond the mid-2020s and, and, and beyond. So what the paper does is pull that together, uh, Chair, and then says, how might we take this forward? And so it, just, just reflecting back on, on the recommendations, um, clearly it's to, to note the, uh, the results of the, of the recent public engagement and the extensive response that we had. Um, recommendation B is just to formally record air quality uh, and climate uh, change as key requirements in, in this measure. You'll recall that that wasn't part of the city deal when it was originally um, signed, but, but certainly members of both the board and the joint assembly have, have, have made a point of that extensively over, over recent months. Uh, recommendation C is to agree a package of public transport and demand management measures um, that are capable of meeting the challenge that we, we've set ourselves, both in terms of traffic reduction and managing the, the future growth. Um, and then agree a set of principles by which we will assess that package. So what is important to us in terms of dealing with congestion, dealing with air quality, some of the social equity issues that were brought out in terms of fairness, price and, and issues like that. And then finally, Chair, um, is just to note the successful bid uh, for, for colleagues from the Government's uh, Innovation and Democracy Fund um, for a citizen assembly to be held in the autumn, whereby we, we, we sit down with a, with a group of, of selected residents and we go through the, the detail and background, the challenge that we've got, and we look to them in terms of, in terms of support and recommendations. I'm happy to leave you there, Chair, and take any questions. Yes, there will be. Um, uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, now, before we um, open up the debate uh, on the um, actual recommendations, um, I believe there might be a, a proposed amendment to those recommendations, which I, I think um, I would like to take first, um, uh, and then we can debate the, the resulting uh, recommendations. Um, that's place. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Chairman, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to put this amendment. If I just wind the clock a little backwards, Cambridge County Council joined the uh, two other authorities and uh, we fully supported that at the time and we still fully support the way forward for the Greater Cambridge Partnership. 
I also listened to the MP for Cambridge and I received a very clear message about improving public transport. I also reflected on the report which the Assembly discussed, which I think had a very similar vein, which is to improve public transport. I don't think many people will argue with that at all. Um, there is the issue of congestion, there is issues of air quality. I think we already know where some of those issues come from in respect to air quality from buses and from diesel. We have a new team at Stagecoach, which certainly I have met, and I've also met the Brian Suter from who come who down from Perth, and I think they are quite committed to um, bear in mind they are new, uh, reflecting perhaps on the service that they provide, and actually to work with us and other organisations in improving. Uh, one hopes uh, the the buses. It's not only about buses, it's also about road space. And it's also about what you could do. So my amendment, which I am proposing and suggesting, comes in respect of there is no change to number A or B. The issue really is around C and D and how you get from A to B. Now, Cambridge County Council, bearing in mind we are the Highways Authority and Transport Authority, we have been for some time. There are many things that can be done on the network. I'll give you a couple of examples. Traffic lights and traffic signals. The, the situation, for instance, if you come in from Huntingdon um, Road, that is, there are traffic signals there to Eddington, the crossing to, to get to Eddington and the um, Darwin Green are sometimes they are not coordinated particularly well and that is reflected throughout the city. So I have circulated a list of what I consider to be issues which need to be considered and addressed and worked on and more importantly to actually get the views of the travelling public in this area. So if you look about uh, with those that have long memories, um, the Cambridge Core scheme was introduced some time ago when I first came to Cambridge. I could drive essentially around the city centre uh, without any restrictions. The Core scheme came in. I think we need to look at that again. So what I'm proposing is that these are investigated, these are researched, and then a report will come back at the future date in respect of what can be done to improve what would be the ask for better public transport. Therefore, improving bus lanes. I appreciate the fact that we have got schemes coming forward, for instance, in Milton Road and Histon Road, which may assist in that, and other projects which are on the agenda today. So my recommendation, Mr Chairman, and I'm happy, for instance, for it to be discussed by other members, is to put forward this recommendation uh, as laid out on the paper. It was circulated before today. I hope that the members of the public have seen what I'm proposing, um, and I hope they, they've got that. Excellent. There was a copy on the left on the chairs. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I'm happy to uh, expand on that, but essentially what I'm saying is there are many other things uh, that can be achieved if we apply some research and evidence to that as we go forward. But the most crucially is to open up a debate with the public about what their views are on this subject. Thank you. Okay, so uh, uh, the next stage would be to um, see if we have a, a seconder for this, uh, this um, the proposed amendments, um, and then, uh, then we would then uh, have a debate on those amendments. Um, uh, Councillor Herbert, you would raise your hand. Will you, uh, did you I was to mainly ask? wanting to contribute. Um, well, I, I, um, I think it's difficult when we have only three members and therefore I do, um, I, I would second but purely, and I under, underline purely, for the purposes of discussion. Okay, well that, that is entirely up to you. If you wish to second it for the purposes of discussion, yeah. then, then we will have a discussion on, on, on the amendments. Um, yes, so, so that is, you're seconding that. Um, so we will now um, uh, open up a debate on the amendments.
Um, I don't know if anyone would like to speak. Um, <laughs> I don't think I've ever done this recently. Um, so I, I prefer to speak both about the motion and the amendment at the same time, and thus save everybody uh, uh, the uh, content of two uh, speeches. So, um, so we have already had extensive public engagement. Um, I was involved in one a while ago, which um, hit the hit a brick wall, um, and it has again been referenced in this uh, as the study that, um, that has and the consultation that's just happened. Um, the way where, where I come from, and I think where um, city councillors are on this issue, um, although I can't speak for all, I can just speak for my group, um, is that we we have a serious congestion problem particularly um, at the peak time journeys. And that um, has been recognised on page 24 in terms of air pollution impacts, for instance, um, which, whilst it's right to say that they're heavily generated by buses, coaches and uh, taxis, they are, those uh, emissions are multiplied uh, by congestion. So one of the fundamental threads is that uh, the public transport service in this city um, is inadequate and the interest perhaps of people coming in from South Cambridgeshire is hugely stunted by the fact that um, uh, buses, particularly regular uh, peak time services, are so uh, stuck and marooned in traffic um, that the option of uh, getting on a bus is debased in, in our city. So unless we actually address the congestion issue, we won't be able to have a decent bus service. And for the moment, um, buses are the prime alternative for people making longer journeys, albeit that, um, as evidenced by the chair of the assembly and others, um, we have an increasing number willing to cycle long journeys. Um, clearly, um, it is the case also that um, uh, the majority of peak time journeys, including to work, um, uh, in Cambridge, evidence us as the only city in Britain um, that has cycling as the largest um, short term, a uh, short -term distance uh, um, journey of, and in the city. So, so I think we start with a problem that congestion doesn't just affect the motorist, it affects everybody. It affects cyclists, it affects walking people, it affects residents because they have to breathe in, fill the air, um, and but it particularly um, acts as a, a total blockage to have an effective public transport system on the surface. So uh, we start with that, and we've had a, we've had extensive discussion. So if we actually look at the responses that we've had, we've had five thousand responses, um, and on page uh, twenty six, for instance, we've got some uh, sorry page seventy three of the agenda, twenty six of the. A, a report on the second stage, because this is the second stage discussion, um, um, we've got an appetite, um, albeit um, you have to sort of weigh it up. So, for instance, introducing a pollution charge, there's 43% uh, rated as their first or second option, um, uh, against 23% um, rated as their fifth or sixth, and I take it uh, that being their least popular option. And whilst statistics are not perfect, that clearly evidences um, uh, that there is um, a recognition that we, um, we need to look at this. Um, um, I take Councillor Bates's points that there are other options, but I see this a bit like a three-legged stool where we've got, um, we've got the major investments that we're looking at in fast public transport routes, of which we will add four, as proposed by the Greater Cambridge Partnership, to two that the County Council already provides. And we will also look to make further improvements on rail, and we'll come to some of that later, because rail is a critical part. So if we take that, um, those routes, if we take the other measures, including some on today's agenda, and ones referenced by um, Councillor Bates, um, including some in his list that he circulated, of which we are doing a lot of, but we could do more of. Um, I think it, we have to do three things together. We have to do 
an intervention to cut congestion, um, fast public transport routes, and the demand management um, public transport transformation. And whilst we've got the prospect in the longer term uh, of the CAM Metro subject to getting the funding right, and that's a continuous source of dialogue um, between the GCP and the Mayor to ensure that, that, that it is fundable, um, uh, it is good news to me that when we discussed this with the Mayor, the Mayor supported um, both the consultation and the principle of demand management. Um, obviously, there's an issue of timing, um, but if Cam Metro is going to take um, up to 10 years to be delivered, and if, um, as is prudent, we have to cover for whether it arrives or not, then um, I don't see the prospect of putting off um, the public debate on this issue as being us being faithful to our city. We've got clean air targets in 2021. We already have dirty air in the city. Um, and we have, we're only going to be able to improve the public transport if, there's a, if we raise a significant sum of money. There's no magic sum to identify, but if we talk about a sum of about 20 million pounds as making a real difference, we need to improve not just the reliability and other figures. And if we also look at the survey about well, what do people want improved about public transport, the, the biggest issues for them um, are actually about issues of reliability um, and hours and uh, the quality of the, the service. Clearly, um, uh, and, and there are voices that I hear saying, Oh, you only want to do things that benefit the city. We, well, we don't. We want to see more radio bus services coming in. We want to see flexible bus services. Um, we want to see the kind of on-demand type service that is being operated in Oxford, where there's far, far more flexibility because we have huge gaps in service. So, so uh, I, uh, my conclusion is that we need to uh, keep the words um, public transport and demand management um, in, the, in the motion. That doesn't rule us out um, from doing a lot of other initiatives. Um, and it doesn't rule out the fact that there will be both a continuing public debate, and there hasn't been much reference to it, but also a citizens' assembly, um, uh, which will also be deliberative democracy, in that it will be public, it will be open, and um, it needs to be representative. And the fact that it will have people from the city, from South Cambridge, and also from the broader geography. And if we look at the responses to the consultation, we will see a heavy response from East Cambridgeshire, West Suffolk, as well as a good response from Huntingdonshire and areas like Uttlesford. Um, um, we, we do need to look at this as being not just about the residents, but about people who work uh, here. So, so um, I don't think we should get lost in the words that, we, with, that are, are there now. I think we would be sending the wrong signals if we delete the words, and um, I support the words um, as they're there. I do think um, that we have to move on this issue, um, and we are, contrary to some of the views that have been expressed in the past, I think we are now getting to time critical in terms of tackling congestion. And I want to see a public bus service that is good for people who can't afford cars, who don't want to have cars, um, as well as cleaner air in the city. But I also want to see full benefits for people who don't live in the city and, and who, who work here, some of whom can't afford the housing prices in the city. So I think the answer is to stick with the original wording in my view. Thank you very much. And, uh, would you like to speak on the, either the amendment or the substantive uh, measure? Thank you. Um, I will speak briefly on both if that's, uh, if that's okay. But um, Councillor Lewis uh, has said much of what I would have said and probably far better than I would say it. Um, I'm disappointed, frankly, to see this amendment coming forward. I think it's an eclectic and one sided view that ignores the huge amount of work that has gone in developing the report and the public consultation um, exercise. I think we need to focus on what the recommendations are, which is really, as it says, to agree and develop a package of demands, uh, of, of public transport and demand management measures, agree the principles upon which that package will be based. We're agreeing nothing 
here that we can't revisit. And the principles behind this approach is an evidence-based approach, and it's important, I think, that we have the evidence to support whatever it is we decide to do. There is no evidence in these um, measures put forward by Councillor Bates to support, for example, how we reduce traffic congestion in the city by 24%, which is what we've agreed we need to do. There's no evidence in these measures to say how are we going to pay for the improved public transport services as they come forward. Those are important questions that the next stage of this work will seek to address. And it's important, I think, that demand management is left on the table as part of a holistic package of measures. The tenth report itself, I think it's thorough, I think it's excellent, I think we have clear public mandate to develop a range of options and come back with those and consider them um, carefully. As I said, it's an evidence-based approach, I think that's the right way forward, and I personally look forward to seeing the next steps in this piece of work. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I'd also like to just make a, a brief comment to on the uh, on the amendment, the proposed amendment, um, and, and then we can um, uh, have a vote on it. So um, uh, I, I think, uh, as I stated before, it would be a huge error to to rule anything out at this stage or, or delay further work on uh, the the the, um, the whole of the city access work um, uh, as a as a as a holistic. Um, uh, um, strategy, uh, which I think is, is uh, what is where the in real interest is. Um, so the, the, the proposal to, to, to limit that in any way, I think, would, would be a huge mistake. Um, I, I, I think the the items uh, on, on the on the list that's been circulated, um, some of which are already being being looked at, um, and I mean, if, if some of them aren't in some sense uh, being looked at as part of the part of the package. Um, then I think they, they should be. Yeah. Um, uh, and, but um, I, I think uh, looking at them in, in such, a, such a clearly divided way uh, between one set and another set that includes the pollution charge, the parking levy, and, and the congestion charge, um, I, I think would, um, would result in, uh, uh, in, in work that, that wasn't as, um, uh, doesn't get as far forward as we need to, uh, nor quick, quick, as quickly as we can. Um, uh, and, and probably would be uh, less effective. Um, I, I think uh, there is nothing preventing uh, work continuing on those other items, uh, whether it's by the County Council or by the Greater Cambridge Partnership itself. Um, uh, so the, the, the County Council, for example, um, I'm sure with the Greater Cambridge Partnership, um, could uh, work on the traffic signals and, and how they can be, they can be improved. Um, and, uh, and, and I think uh, we've had um, ample opportunity to engage with the public on on on, uh, on the range of options that we've got uh, to help uh, manage congestion, um, and uh, there will be further opportunities. Um, in particular, when we have a much fuller understanding um, of how uh, how some of these uh, interventions interact um, and what their what their impact is, what their cost is, and what their outcomes are, I think at this stage uh, that should, that should be our focus. Um, so I, I'm going to be um, supporting the amendment. Um, I will reserve one or two comments for the um, ongoing debate. Um, so I think, um, would you like to um, make a sort of sum up on the, on the amendment? Um, I don't think we differ as much as you think. Okay? Sorry, I will repeat that. I don't think we differ as much as you think. Okay? So what I'm asking for, actually, is some more work to be done on some of the things which we've not even looked at. Okay. There is quite a strength of feeling in respect of demand management, okay, and therefore that needs to be recognised. It was recognised actually in the work that was done. It was a good piece of work in respect of the number of people that contributed. I'm very grateful that it wasn't just actually the Greater Cambridge Partnership area. It took in considerable other views. Um, for people in, in East Cairns, Finland, um, <coughs> Hunts, etc., but also actually outside of our county. And I think we have uh, that responsibility to also consider, okay? And therefore, that is why I put this uh, proposal uh, forward, okay? This change and this amendment. So, uh, if you like, I'm quite happy to uh, continue with that recommendation. I appreciate the fact that I. I 
don't think I have a secondary, despite Councillor Lewis's but. but, 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 I appreciate your flakiness on this particular issue. So, uh, that I think is the situation. I, I look forward, for instance, to see some of that work go on. I mean, if you just take a, another example in respect to schools, um, everybody actually, I think, knows quite well when half term is uh, and when school holidays are, okay? And therefore, we need to engage with schools, uh, which I don't believe we have. Uh, and therefore, I think there is actually work still to be done, okay? on a broad range, you, you're talking about uh, a package. Some of this is the package which we need to recognise and we need to do work on it. That is why I brought this amendment to the attention. Okay. Um, thank you very much. So uh, we now have the, the proposal, the um, uh, proposed amendment before us, um, so we can take a, a vote on that. Um, who uh, would like to vote in favour of the amendment? <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, who would like to vote against the amendment? against and, and uh, Professor Almendig as well uh, and with no abstentions. So the, the uh, amendment uh, has, has, has fallen so we can now um, move on to the uh, discussion on the uh, um, main recommendations um, uh, unamended um, although uh, I think possibly next I would take a small comment from uh, um, uh, Claire Ruskin who's I think not I would be here but she can send in some comments uh, she would like the addition of a, a comma um, after GCP's vision in uh, item C. Um, I don't know whether we can take that um, just as, a, as a minor. I think mean, it's pretty well, minor. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. So we can then debate it with the common, with the comment. Makes it nice and clearer. Um, so uh, um, uh, I think um, uh, yes, so if we can now um, have any, any more points you would like to make on the, on the main recommendations in addition to, to what's already said. Mm -hmm. Well, I think briefly, we, we, as I said, there are three. Uh, elements that we're pursuing. We're pursuing um, the need to tackle congestion and uh, demand management and public transport. We've got a strategy, rightly, of um, uh, uh, priority routes for public transport, which will be there for buses, potentially for the CAN Metro. Um, and we've got other initiatives. So I do hope and uh, do think that we should look at the list that um, uh, that Ian has reminded us of, and that way, uh, some of which we are acting on, some of which we can look to do more on, some of which we've got reference to a report later in the, today's agenda or, or in, in other ones. But I do think we should um, ensure that we're following this through um, in the period before we make a, a bigger decision. Um, and. Yeah, there's reference in um, the paper that Ian circulated to Cam Metro, and it would be good um, if we could have clarity in the next year maximum um, on the fundability of that, because we do need to see whether or not that's part of the equation, including because it, it can influence what we might finally decide on this. Yeah. Um, uh, Mr. Blake, I was wondering if I could um, follow up uh, comment, Councillor Herbert's comments on the um, on the list that um, Councillor Blake has produced. Um, uh, whether when we're doing the work um, uh, that we um, will be asking you to do the recommendations, um, you'll be able to ensure that uh, all of these uh, points are, are fully included in the, in the, in the package um, and evaluated um, along with everything else. Okay, fair enough, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, are there any other comments on the um, substantive uh, recommendations? Um, do you want to add anything further? Well, I shall uh, just make a, a, a brief comment. Um, so, the, the um, I think uh, coming back to the, the question from um, Spelly, there is an extreme urgency on this matter. Um, I think the the recommendation that we've got, which includes air quality and climate change, in there, uh, emphasises that point. Um, whether you are specifically about the, the, um, whether we can do things before uh, any sort of environmental management come in. Um, I, I think there are, there are at this stage, there were dangers in, in uh, moving ahead on, on one particular item, such as a, um, a, a clean air zone that you, you um, 
uh, uh, talking about, the low emission zone, sorry, um, uh, uh, um, and how it interacts with the other interventions. But I, I, I would expect we will um, have some answers on that quite quickly so that we know what we can do now and what we can do um, in, the, in, the, um, in the medium term and in the longer term. And uh, come back to a, a point that um, Councillor Bates has made, uh, looking at the sequencing of, of uh, these interventions, um, uh, how they interact with each other, what their impact is. Um, uh, and uh, I think um, uh, it is absolutely crucial that we do have um, more detail to, to really look at the impact um, uh, on the environment uh, and on um, uh, people who, who are um, less able to afford um, any, any form of pricing or impacted by any of these interventions um, before we can really um, uh, make, make a decision. So at this stage, I feel like what we're asking for is uh, um, uh, more, uh, more work uh, on these matters um, rather than taking any final decision. So, um, is there uh, any other more comments on the recommendations? Um, if we could move to a vote. So, who would, uh, so um, uh, can I have some votes, uh, indicated votes for the recommendations? Um, so, thank you very much. That's two. Um, that's um, are there any votes against uh, the recommendations? And are there any abstentions on the recommendations? Thank you very much. Aspects. Thank you. So, uh, uh, as I, I said it from the Constitution, that means the recommendations are adopted, um, and um, uh, you are tasked with um, doing a look at our Fortunately. Right, so we uh, now move on to um, our item 8, uh, which uh, is the Western Cambridge packet, uh, package, um, the Cambridge South West uh, Travel Hub, and oh, let's get markers, all the things we have uh, um, for. Questions on that or one of them, uh, one person isn't here, uh, so we'll be having three questions. Um, so, uh, um, Nala Joan, would you like to? Oh, sorry, from Dutch. Um, Councillor Martin Harris. Sorry, from Dutch. Thank you. Would you like to come and answer a, ask a question? I'm not sure if you've done this before, but um, you have uh, I haven't. Three, three minutes uh, to ask a question, and there's the, the traffic light system there where it's green, and then uh, to start with, and then after about 30 seconds before the end, I think it goes orange and then red, but um, I'm sure that won't be an issue. Um, and then we'll have a response, um, and then we'll invite the. Um, okay. and do, you want to, do, do we take them all together, the questions all together, and then you get the response all together? I think that, I think that was the. Yeah. Um, uh, so if you could ask a question and then we'll have the, the other two questions and okay. then uh, we'll get a response. Before there's any response. Yes, that's right. Okay. So uh, all of the questions relate to the new park and ride of Alston. Right, so question one. At 24,500 pounds per parking place, this project is poor value for money according to the DFT. Had the decision been taken to provide on-site parking for workers at the new Andrew Bar Medical Campus, Firms moving there would have been obliged to fund construction of on-site parking for their workforce, perhaps multi-storey parking as at Addenbrooke's Hospital. Indeed, publicly funded parking at the new Hawkston Park and Ride is to be provided for corporate, well-financed firms such as AstraZeneca. How can this major subvention from the public purse for private industry be justified? Second question, is this new park and ride to be permanent or is it, as the Mayor seems to have directed, a temporary infrastructure? And following on from that, if it is to be temporary, please could you answer the following questions. When will it be decommissioned? How much will the decommissioning cost? And will the land be returned to its present greenbelt condition? And the, the final question, the Hawkston Park and Ride will require additional traffic lights on the A10, northbound traffic on the M11, exiting at Junction 11, will enter a new Park and Ride by crossing the northbound flow of traffic on the A10. What measures are therefore planned to prevent tailbacks on the A10 into Hawkston and Harston? And how will the traffic lights be sequenced to avoid queuing onto the M11? Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your questions. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, yes, as I said, we'll, we'll take the three questions and then we'll come back to the rest of it. Thank you very much. Uh, so now we have uh, uh, Jan Nado. Uh, so after um, uh, the third, uh, after the third question, I'll leave on the um, sheet. Um, also, um, <coughs> So it's just a uh, rephrase, about three minutes, although I'm going to ask 
Thank you. This question is being asked on behalf of Tim Arnold, who is a resident of, Har of Harston. The park and ride site at Hawkston will not come on stream until at least 2021, somehow down from the 2023 figure stated in earlier rounds of proposals, and at £55 million is significantly more expensive than the figures quoted in the 2018 consultation of four to 12 million pounds. And as high profile cases such as the Ely Bypass and King's Dyke Crossing show, these projects usually overrun and overspend significantly. Given that a temporary Cambridge South station is likely to appear in a similar time frame, and with travel hubs in places like Foxton and Whittlesford now in the frame, isn't a park and ride at Corkston, both contrary to GCP's concerns about air quality and climate change, and a colossal waste of time and money, which has been shown to be a disbenefit to both commuters and local communities? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, the the, the uh, question four on the, on the sheets uh, from um, Edward Lee, I think will be answered uh, in writing uh, for not able to, to be here. Um, so, uh, and I'd like to ask, is um, Peter Hay the top ask the fifth question? Yes. Ah. Mm -hmm. Good to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, again, just to reiterate, you've got, you've got three minutes um, to ask the question, and the red light will appear uh, when, when you've you. got three minutes. Thank you very much. Good Thank afternoon, you. ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Chairman. Um, at the GCP Executive Board meeting of the 21st of March 2018, Harson Residents Group expressed concern about the impact of a new park and ride site on traffic volume and air pollution in Harston. The decision of the Board was that further analysis should be undertaken for the outlined business case, including traffic modelling along the A10 and M11, including noise and air pollution. It is disappointing to note that in the airplane business case that none of this analyst, analysis sorry, has been undertaken in Harston. The park and ride option selected will include two additional signalised junctions for access and egress control, which will exacerbate congestion on the A10 back to and through Harston, causing additional air pollution. The airplane business case does not include Harston in the impact area of the park and ride site. The outlined business case environmental appraisal is based on incomplete 2017 data gathered by South Cairns District Council inasmuch that there were no measurements recorded for July, October, November and December. Particularly and ozone levels are extrapolated from this incomplete data and generalised data of South Cairns area. <coughs> the Executive Board has recommended that officers work with communities. The Joint Assembly commented on the potential impact on communities along the A10 and the need to mitigate that impact. In Harston, the traffic volume has increased almost 20% in three years to 18,800 daily. In 2019, that was a GCP figure. A further increase of 30 to 40 percent is forecast over the next 10 years. The question is, what proposals are there for mitigation of the impact on communities along the A10, i.e. Harston, and when the proposals are being prepared will comprehensive monitoring of current air and noise pollution be undertaken? Thank you very much for your question. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, so I'd now like to ask uh, Mr Blake um, if he could address uh, um, those uh, three questions that we've had and, um, and then uh, and I'll take your reply in writing to um, the question for from Thank you, Chair. I mean, we will respond in writing anyway to all the questions that, that, that we've had, but just to try and sort of capture three um, similar questions in terms of levels of concern. Um, the, the partnership through the city deal is seeking to develop a sustainable transport network that deals with the problem we've got today, not based on decisions that were taken some period of time ago about Avonbrooks or anything else. The, the, the problem we face today is 
there is significant growth, I think it's the final question you're outlined on, on the network. And that growth is predicted to increase over the, between now and, and, and 2031. So we are looking at levels likely to increase between 20 and 30 percent additional traffic. So do nothing is not an option. We have to do something to try and to try and address this. The Cambridge Travel Hub, and the Travel Hub's important, not, not South West, not Park and Ride Site, is part of a package to, to deal with that. What we're not talking about here is a conventional drive to a Park and Ride Site, get on a bus in there. What we're seeking to do is to promote other public transport and accessible transport options, such as walking and cycling. So we need to enhance the walking and cycling networks in the area, particularly working with, with the local community to, 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 to address that. To encourage people who are otherwise coming to within the Greater Cambridge area to look at the last few miles by means other than, than, than the private vehicle. In terms of the Mayor's view on temporary or otherwise, we are obliged to be cognizant of his view that this, the, the park and ride sites in his, his term, need to be temporary in nature. So there are issues like a tunnel under the A10 that has not been considered because that is clearly not, not temporary in, in, in nature. But that said, the CAM business case that was recently accepted by uh, the combined authority clearly has a, a travel hub node in this, in this area really linking to that network. So there are no plans to decommission this site if it gets approval and, 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 and is in So there will be no cost of, of, of doing that. The, the issue that's been raised by, by a number of questioners on, on the local traffic issues is an important one in how we best manage and mitigate that. The proposals that we've got at the moment don't include a fully optimised traffic uh, signal system. That is already in train. I think that's been alluded to in a number of questions around the signalling work and, and board members will be aware and in question is it's, it's probably worth noting that we've already commenced the review of traffic signals across the entire data Cambridge area. We've completed that audit. We know what works, we know what doesn't work. And for all the schemes we are proposing, we're looking at improving the traffic signals in the area. So we are still looking to reduce the number of traffic signals as part of this scheme. Um, and they will all be connected to the wider traffic signal network. They will be optimised, so they will ensure smoother flows, and it will deliver additional capacity in the area. So the gyratory, the key blocker on, the, on this route, the, the flows will be improved. Now that comes back to the question around the costs and the difference in cost, uh, as opposed to the initial consultation and today. The initial consultation costs were for the site itself, for the travel hub site, for the facilities, for the parking and cycling arrangements. What we're proposing here is for improvements on the slip roads, improvements <coughs> on the gyratory, and particularly improvements in the traffic signalling that will deliver benefits to the local area, which is why the costs have, uh, have, 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 in, have increased over the period, because we fully captured these. The costs have been captured in accordance with Government, Treasury, Green Book uh, requirements, including optimism, bias, and, and, and risk allocations. The temporary Cambridge South Station issue that, that, that was raised, at, at the moment there has been no progress on the temporary Cambridge South Station. Um, board members will be aware that we are a funding partner for the Cambridge South Station, Station scheme. That, 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 sorry, get my teeth right. Um, at the moment, we have a time frame with Network Rail of 2025 delivery, um, subject to final business case, securing the available funding, and critically the rail possessions in terms of the impact on, on, uh, on, on that network. Um, in, in terms of the, the transport modelling and the, the uh, OBC that was undertaken, the transport modelling does cover the, uh, the local area goes out, out to Royston in terms of the assessment that, uh, that's been undertaken. I, I, I think that the challenge that's been made about how you deal with the, the traffic and transport problems in the local villages is a fair one, but I would link it back to the wider network we're trying to create. The Foxton Park and Rail site is targeted to deliver improvements on the A10. The, the, the Cambridge South Station will seek to deliver improvements on, on the A10. The, the report that we've just heard around how we access 
the city and what public transport network work we have, not just within the city environs, but within wider South Cambridge and beyond, will contribute to dealing with the problems we experience on the A10 and our other, route, uh, other routes in. There's not a single solution for this. Um, finally, in terms of the environmental assessment, noise and, and, and the other, work has already been done that's included in the business case. The recommendations are that we take this forward to a planning application and the planning authority will want to see what environmental mitigation, what noise and other impacts um, have been or raised as a result of the scheme and how the mitigation is proposed as part of that, that consideration. I hope I've picked up most of the, the, the main points, Chair, and we certainly will be writing to, to, to the question with, uh, with a full response on this. Yes, okay. So thank you. So yes, so you'll be providing a response. Um, in a relatively reasonable time scale, not soft. We'll work through it. We're chasing yeah. the units. And, and, and so, obviously, if there's any any follow-ups, do do um, get in touch. We're happy to. Yeah, to absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, thank you very much. Um, so uh, we've also had uh, some representation from the Trumpeton Residents Association and the Smart Cambridge Transport, um, which uh, old board members have seen. Um, um, will they publish? Um, what is their sort of status? I mean, the world of Smart Cambridge Transport one is definitely on their website. So that's sort of to take into account, I think. Um, so uh, I think we can now move on to the, um, the report itself. Uh, and um, without, without wanting you to repeat yourself too much, do you think you could uh, introduce the report, Mr. Blake? Thank you, Chair. Just, just, just a sort of few introductory comments. So um, board members will be aware of, of, of this project. This is not the first time you've seen the, the paper. This is an update following public consultation and further work that we've done. This isn't the final decision. I'll come back to what the recommendations are, are at the end, but, but this, this is not the final decision on, on, on the scheme. Um, what the, the early stages of the report tried to do are very much linked to the, the, the problem and the challenge and the issue in the area around congestion, which I think we've, uh, we've covered previously, particularly on the gyratory, and also our forecast demand increase in terms of park and ride and travel hub space requirements in the area. So what we're looking at in paragraph 4.6 is a significant increase in requirements for people to, to park before they, uh, they enter the city. We know at the moment that Trumpington is already full most days, and I think um, growth in Trumpington has increased by 8% over, over the last 12 months, and, and up to capacity we expect that growth to, to continue. The paper outlines the, the, the wider network of which this, this forms part of, um, and also forms part, as I said previously, of the, of the CAM network. Paragraph 6 focuses on the response to, to the, uh, uh, the response to the recent uh, public consultation in terms of very strong support for a need to improve public transport, walking and cycling options in the area. Um, over 70% of the responses supported development of, of this site um, and also using the existing infrastructure that, that was in place. Just want to focus on, on paragraph 6.8, um, Chair if I may, may, and this very much links to, to some of the questions that we've received. In that whilst there's, there's broad support for the scheme, there are entirely legitimate local concerns about what the impact is on the local communities and the local environments. And that's something that we need to continue to work on in terms of the detail. So uh, I raised previously walking and cycling options how do we link the local villages to this hub for walking and cycling options and then onwards into, um, in, in, into the city? Um, the Trumpington residents' um, response was, whilst being very supportive of the principal on this side, raised concerns about using the existing agricultural bridge and the impact on, on the local park environment. So there are a number of local concerns that we need to undertake further detailed design work on that we need to be talking to local communities on how we can not just mitigate local impacts of the scheme but actually ensure that local residents benefit from this in terms of um, enjoying access to, to the travel hub and the, um, the scheme that it will, will provide. Um, just in terms of the, the sort of the, the next steps, uh, Chair, before I go back to the recommendations. So, so what we're looking at here is, is approval to submit a planning application and all the detailed design that goes with that. So that will include um, the noise and, and other issues that were <coughs> raised by, by one of the, the questioners. 
We will continue, as I was questioned at the Joint Assembly on this, we will continue to see whether we can send the vehicles through the existing junction um, rather than using the, the additional bridge. There are uh, time and, and other impacts on doing that, but we, we will continue to, to, to do that. Um, and, and, and we will be publishing further details of the signalling strategy that will actually look at a much wider area than, than just this, this, the, this uh, the particular um, local environment of the, of the site chair. So, so just in terms of the recommendations, it is no the, the outcomes of the, the, the public consultation. It is about endorsing, progressing the site in this area to planning application stage with all that requires. <coughs> it is about um, negotiating the, 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 the access and, and the land issues. And, and finally, and, and, and not, not by no means least, it is recognising that when we started this project, we made clear that we, we do need to improve public transport, walking and cycling options along Trumpington Road into, into the city. <coughs> and that's not being lost here. What we're trying to do is to progress the, 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 the travel hub and that we will receive further report in terms of the options for improving access along the Trumpington Road corridor generally. Thank you, um, Thank you very much. Um, so I'd like to um, uh, open up discussion to the to the board. Um, I, I think I'd like to, like to start with a comment that I received from um, Claire Roskin of Essex, um, uh, which I'll, I'll just read out um, for everybody for the minutes. So um, uh, Claire writes that uh, having read and considered the petition that we've effectively received by emails, um, there's been an email um, campaign. Uh, I agree that we need mitigation, but still think that we urgently need this to be delivered. It is an intervention we need to make and for, make for the continued success of Cambridge. We should be looking at the entire flows, including the choice drivers and public transport users make at Royston, between the A603 and the A10. Uh, then the Fox and Travel Hub, then the M11 Junction 11, and looking at train plus bus plus private car plus cycling. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so any comments? Thanks for Herbert. Um, well, we appreciate just a few more questions, opportunity to start with. Um, so just looking at the report, um, the first area, um, Mr. Blake, is looking at page 163 and the, tra the data, the, the arrival data. So um, it's, it's been referenced that this is current um, data. Do we have any uh, projections on the future data, given that um, we've still got firms moving into the biomedical campus. We've got uh, packets uh, presumably arrived after this data. Um, children's hospital, other activity at the Edinburgh's biomedical campus. So, so we considered at our, at our last meeting the uh, travel uh, study report on the biomedical campus particularly, and, th and that introduced the significant projections for the wider campus site. What we've included in this report are, are just the projections as they relate directly to that to that gyratory. But clearly, the biomedical campus report references this as a scheme that is required to try and relieve some of the, the pressure, both on the side, but also particularly on the residential communities around the side that are experiencing the traffic growth associated with that, that, that economic success. And then, just um, looking, well, the the plan on. A1 on page 165 looks at what is the, if you like, the core network. Um, there is a parallel rail line, which I'll come back to when I get the opportunity to say something um, later. Um, but clearly the M11 is, is a major feature in terms of uh, arrivals into that area. Um, but more, you, you, you talked about this mitigation, and I think I might come back to that, uh, Chair, when we say something, because I do think it, it merits um, a clearer set of words, I think. Um, but um, my next questions are on page 170 and 171. So, um, is it, I just appreciate, um, uh, Mr. Blake, just a bit more talk through of the plan on uh, figure seven, um, where we've got effectively the, the travel routing. So we're expecting that the primary use um, in terms of the largest volume of traffic will be people coming off the M11 coming north. That, that's the expectation. Yeah. So but by and large, car users do not like going back on themselves. Hmm. Yeah. So if you're coming north on the M11 and you're able to drive into a travel hub site and get an alternative way into, into the city, 
the expectation is that will be the predominant um, uh, sort of movement going in. And that would um, display some of the people that currently would go all the way around the roundabout and into the Trumpington Park and Ride, albeit that if there's increased arrivals, then uh, quite a lot of people from coming south on the M11 will fill their spaces. So the increased arrivals are going to happen anyway. If we do nothing, traffic is going to grow and experience, and I think with the, 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 the figures that one of the questions used are quite right in terms of the, the, the traffic growth that's experienced in this area anyway. By getting people not going round the roundabout in the morning peak increases the capacity of the, of the gyratory. So what we want to try and do is to make, how do we capture that? How do we use the signaling system that, that enables the wider network to flow better, which contributes to, to, to you know, managing that flow, reducing the, the issues at this particular pitch point. Including yeah. buses. Including buses. Yeah. And then you've got a right turn that goes off at the second junction, yeah. effectively, as people are coming down the, if they're coming sat effect, sort of south down the A10. Yeah. And uh, can you just explain a bit more about the um, the use of the what's called the agricultural crossing? So, so the the agricultural crossing is an existing crossing um, over the the M11, and what we're looking to do is to use that for the public transport vehicles, walking and cycling. So there is a segregated system whereby the vehicles don't actually have to go through the gyrator itself. The only caveat I would give, because uh, I gave this at the Joint Assembly, is actually if there is a way of creating significant capacity at that junction, we may be able to put those vehicles through. However, at the moment, we've not been able to achieve that. So we're looking at the agricultural bridge. It will ensure that there is no journey time reduction for people who are choosing to use the bus walk or cycle into the city. That's what we're trying to achieve. But we do recognise and say trouble to residents amongst others have raised issues around that particular. The impact. So so then I just finally um, in terms of questions chair come on to the paragraph eight. So it's been referenced there's been references to a cost per cut parking place and also to a figure of fifty five million pounds and the report says thirty million pounds. Are you in a position to give some kind of breakdown in terms of the main travel hub and the separate a fund a estimate at this stage for this agricultural route crossing as a separate element? We, we can certainly provide that. I mean, the, one okay. of the reasons to, to using the agricultural bridge is it's existing and we're not having to build a new structure. When we've discussed previously on, on either building additional structures on the, on the, uh, over the M11 or indeed putting a tunnel under the A10, um, into, the, into the side directly, we know that that's added significantly to the cost. So one of the advantages of using the existing infrastructure is it reduces the cost, but we can certainly provide that information. So then I'll ask it a different way. Um, uh, what does the £30 million on page 171 include? So if you go back to your figure seven, yeah. what, what we're doing is we are building a travel hub but we are trying to put more capacity in that gyratory mm -hmm. to deal with some of the issues that the, the, the question has raised. So we are so there's enhancing in the, slip, the gyratory. Investing in the yeah. gyratory into, into the slip roads, so uh, Highways yeah. England network, into the, the southbound of the A10 as we go out um, to, uh, to, towards Foxton and, and beyond, and then into the, the Trumpington Road element. So the, what we're trying to do is to ensure that we can deliver this and we improve the flow of the gyratory, which is where the number, the number so is. So it's a travel It's far more than just a travel, a travel yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I, do, I just think, whilst I, I take some of the challenge about the cost of it, um, if we could publish an estimate about the breakdown, um, I just think it, it's right, it, we should be open, um, but also we thereby evidence the elements and then when we look, we do look at the final decision. Um, then we're in a in a better position. And uh, clearly, the costs may uh, vary. And I also take the point, including um, that transport projects do vary in price. Um, but we just clearly we will, at a future date, have a decision to make. Um, 
But I, I, I do ask that we publish more accurately and openly what the costs are. Now, it doesn't change my overall view, but I just wanted to ask those questions. Okay. Chair. Yep, thank you very much. Um, so uh, perhaps it would be sensible if we um, asked, came up with any other questions we might have before uh, sort of making any comments. Uh, yeah. please. My question relates to on page 171, which is actually nine. Have, have Highways England a view of what is being suggested here, and have we had any discussions with them? I appreciate uh, what it says at 91, but I think it's important at this stage, what is their view, please? Because uh, the, the bulk of the, the traffic actually is coming either north or south on, the, uh, on that particular motorway, and, and we are not responsible for that. So have they expressed a view yet? And I'd like to perhaps come back to mitigation, I think, to some of the other issues, which I think Councillor Herbert has also said about some mitigations, but we'll come back. Highways England. So Highways England, we've had extensive uh, discussions, as you'd expect, with them. They, they are very uh, broadly supportive of, of the principle um, and of the, the project. Um, we are working closely with their design consultants in terms of the detail of how this can be done. Thank you. Okay. Um, do you have another question, Leo? No, no, it's, re it, it, it's, it's on, really so. about some of the questions that we had, which is about yeah. the sort of mitigations and okay. working with local communities on on those issues on a broader sense. Okay. Um, first of all, did you have any questions about the question? Okay. So, so I, I very might just ask a couple of questions as well. Um, so in, in terms of the the um, the sort of phase construction of this. Um, uh, and the, the management of it. Uh, is it envisaged that the, the work would be phased? The, the, um, obviously, uh, a lot of the um, slip roads and, and the changes to the um, you can't really phase them, but in terms of the, the development of the actual hub itself, um, it, would it be 2,000 spaces all in one go, or would you sort of um, uh, envisage it being uh, developed um, out over time? I, I, as I sit here, I think we would see it be as a phased uh, yeah. delivery for a whole, for a whole host of uh, Thank you. Um, uh, and uh, what thought has been given to this, this question of, of how you man manage these two uh, park and ride sites um, uh, close to each other on different sides, and then whether there's a potential, uh, if, they, if, if people don't know what the situation is at each site, to actually have slightly longer journeys and actually produce more traffic by going around the roundabout, uh, finding a divide to the yeah. empty one. Um, so I suppose th th that risk actually exists today as Trumpington's full. Yes. Um, and so actually we will begin, as it's full almost every day, we'll begin to see that on the network in, in any case. No, we are very cognizant of, of that, so uh, traffic management and signage uh, will be part of this to ensure that uh, people understand which is the best uh, best location for them, and I think it does come back to the um, the point that was raised by Councillor Bates earlier on, on working with businesses on travel planning, so that they understand actually where is where is you know, working through the businesses. How do they convey the messages to say actually you want to go to site A or you want to go to site okay. B? Gosh. And I also had a question about the, the bridge, which obviously uh, is sort of early stages in the design, so you, you might not know the, the, the detail answer, but it's a relatively narrow bridge. Um, uh, so uh, is it clearly envisaged at the moment that the, there would be a separate structure of some sort for walking and cycling? Because uh, having uh, this, this will, especially with the, with the Greenways project, um, potentially um, introducing new routes into Cambridge, it's already... Uh, um, one, one route into Cambridge that avoids um, the, the roundabout. Um, uh, and I think it would be sort of a, a step back if then we um, uh, produced conflict, created conflict between cyclists and buses on a, on a bridge like this. So I entirely yeah. endorse that. Um, yes. We're not at the moment looking at set the structure, but we are looking to expand the capacity of the existing bridge. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I, I, yes, I there, would be, there would be separation between, separation. between okay. the Okay. Um, thank you very much. Um, so if there's any more questions of um, clarification, then I think we can have any other, any um, more uh, general comments on the, on the report and the recommendations, Councillor Herbert. Um, so I think we've been challenged by Smarter Cambridge Transport and also others to say, is this needed? Um, and where does it fit within the broad strategy? And um, I, I just have, uh, I've, I've assessed that and I've, I've, I've listened and I've read. Um, uh, we are at a point where this junction is already overloaded 
and we're also at a point where the Trumpington Park and Ride is no longer going to be able to meet the needs of taking traffic off the road. I take the challenge from a number of voices that says we've got to do more than this and I do want us to continue to pursue um, uh, further ways that we can get more people onto the rail um, from Royston upwards, um, travel hubs uh, and also other measures. But I note that the, um, even with the ambitions of Cam Metro, um, um, there isn't a, at this stage a proposal to put in additional transport other than if we can finance um, uh, bus services. Unless we do what we discussed in the last item, I don't see um, a significant improvement in bus services um, along the A10. Um, I note that we've uh, not supported um, a flyover at the A10 junction, uh, at the, on the A10 where it, it uh, crosses Foxton, and the rail line at Foxton, and I think that that's a, in part a recognition that we do not uh, encourage um, that route as a, as, a, as, a, as a significant route. But we, we have um, a major access into the city, both from the south but also from the north, by car, which is not going to have another answer in public transport terms, other than the fact that we would hope that people would be able to get off before they come along the A428 in. Um, there will be other choices. But with the um, 25,000 jobs and the number of visitors that need to get in and out of Addenbrooke's, um, we need to have a combination of a travel hub and much better bus services, including a bus service that uh, links across to Bayburn, but also, I hope, a far better bus service that starts further down um, the A10. So I think, think this is needed, but I do think some wording um, which addresses the fact that we are still, this is still work in progress, including on mitigation, would assist if it was added to E. And I'm sorry that I haven't uh, uh, raised this uh, with people before, but some phrase to the effect of, if you add at the end of the current wording of E, um, that we, we're removing that off, um, but either there or as a separate recommendation, um, but that further work be undertaken on mitigation and local benefits full stop. Um, and I don't know whether that's So the, 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 there's, we're part of the way there, I think, in, in the oh, second sorry. clause of yeah. C, but I think probably not, not okay. quite as far right. as... Right, well, I just, I just think that... Yeah. Um, so, sorry, I'm, I'm being uh, a bit cat-handed. No, no. So, um, so if the C is including continued dialogue uh, with local communities um, and further work to mitigate uh, the local impacts of the scheme, because yes. I just think we yeah the, I agree. The, there is that, and I just think when we start to model what we could do in terms of an improved bus service as well as other measures to um, intercept car journeys before they come closer to Cambridge, then you know evidencing that we are not our strategy is not to have a ring of travel hubs or parking lines around the city. It's to extend quality transport. So I just think, therefore, you've appointed me much better, Chair. Um, uh, to admit to, so I just want two words, really. Uh, and, and further work. So, yeah. so after right, the, local, after local communities and further work. Yeah. Um, uh, because because the, it isn't just about a dialogue. It is actually about mitigation. Yeah. Um, but I do, in saying that, um, uh, I, and I, 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 I do believe there is an evidence base uh, to support uh, this. There is a, a clear need, and within the broad strategy of main public transport routes, interception and reduction of congestion, um, and uh, this is part of a range of basket of other measures, this will contribute to overall addressing the transport challenge. And I accept that there are concerns in Harston about and Walkston, um, including because um, they sit astride the A10, um, but, but that, uh, and there will need to be further measures to assist them as well. Okay. But, but the, this is necessary. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so there's a specific proposal to include the words and further work after local communities uh, in the last line of uh, recommendation C. Uh, 
Would you be happy with that? Do you want to discuss that? Well, I'm, I'm happy to support that. I actually wrote down uh, before and after, okay, because what we actually need, I think, actually is uh, the before and after, which is actually what the current traffic levels are. We do traffic counts about the noise, about pollution, etc. So the, the, the work, I think, needs to be um, along those lines. It's what is happening on the A14 uh, currently, be the before and after, and therefore you can actually judge after. You can actually then go backwards and say, well, this is what it was, this is what it is now, and therefore we need to actually put that. That's the, the why I would support the uh, amendment as proposed. Well, okay, okay. It, 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 yes, a necessary change because it will actually broaden it out, I think, and therefore there needs to be those discussions with the local communities, with the local parish councils about how that would work. But we've got good evidence in, on the A14, uh, as you might say, on on some of those issues. So therefore. It, it's not new, it's not rocket science, and it's been done already, and currently it's happening. Yes, thank you. Um, I feel you're happy with that amendment? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you very much. So we can take that list and then proceed on, on, on that basis. Okay. Um, so uh, would you like to say anything on this item particularly? Nothing that's not already been um, said, I think, but I'm just supporting that. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and the, the recommendations themselves. Um, so would you like to say anything more on the recommendations? No, I, I think at the moment um, it, it yep. is, as been said, work in progress. It's a lot more to come with the planning applications, which will yep. obviously uh, go into the public domain. So there is more opportunities for work to take place and and mitigation. Um, obviously, um, my disappointment a little bit really is, uh, is maybe about the uh, Trumpington Road because uh, having view, viewed it some time ago now. Um, I think I said at the time uh, when one of the officers uh, took me down there, I think he's actually in, in the room actually, uh, I'm not sure what you will do here, I think is what I said. So uh, I think it will be interesting to see if that is removed, but it will be still a challenge because despite the two park and rides, uh, the Trumpet and, and the, the M11 one, um, you've got the challenge actually as you get closer to the centre. And it, and it is a challenge. And, and just to underline the point that with that, I mean, I, it's right that Hawkston and Palston um, have, have uh, made strong representations. Um, but I do think that we need to think about the other side of the motorway if we do uh, route traffic over it. Um, because we have got a country park at that end and there does need to be mitigation because it needs to be a peaceful place for most of the time. And yes. it, it's a large park, so it should be feasible, provided that the alignment is uh, right bang on the only lane. Yes. I mean, the, 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 that aspect of the other side, of the, the, the route over the other side of the bridge is very much part of the, of the proposal, isn't it? Um, thank you. So I'll, I'll just um, uh, make a couple of comments myself, if I may. Um, uh, I have to admit to being extremely unhappy uh, about um, having to make this decision. I think. Uh, two ways. One is that uh, any sort of uh, um, infrastructure investment that is essentially helping cars, I think, is what not, not what we should be focusing on. Um, so uh, this, this is what essentially what this is, is making it easier for, for car drivers, many of whom won't have a choice, but many of whom will when we have our, um, uh, the, the strategy in place, actually making it easier for them, for them to get um, uh, very close to Cambridge. And um, secondly, uh, the potential uh, for, uh, for worsening the situation in Harston um, uh, for the residents of Harston, and particularly who live along the A10 or have to um, uh, uh, move along the A10 uh, for whatever reason, uh, I think it, uh, there is the potential. It's not clear from the, from the um, data that we've got, uh, but there is the potential that fears, uh, I think, are very real, uh, that this will make it significantly worse, um, the, the quality of life for people in Harston significantly worse. Um, uh, in terms of the air quality, uh, but generally the, the, the impact of that, uh, that volume of traffic through the, um, uh, through the um, village. Uh, uh, this is, I think, we're having to take the decision because there has been a historic failure um, to plan properly for the growth of um, the biomedical campus uh, and how people get um, to and from, uh, from there, um, uh, either to work or, or, or as patients. Uh, and this is 
Um, this is the, 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 the first major um, intervention that we're making a decision on. Um, there's another one, um, the next item is effectively uh, solving the same, helping solve the same problem in a, in a very different way. Um, but th this is essentially um, solving a, 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 the problem that there isn't um, a, a, an easy way of getting to the biomedical campus uh, by public transport or by other means, uh, by more sustainable modes, uh, and that the many, many people will have to get most of the way there by car um, for a, a considerable time. So we are, we are um, having to do this uh, to address that failure. The biomedical campus is growing rapidly. Uh, as Mr. Blake said, that, that traffic will come uh, and people will need to get to the biomedical campus. And, and this is, an, um, I, I fear, a necessary intervention um, uh, to, to not to reduce um, some of the impacts on that. Um, uh, so the, 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 and the development like this itself is always going to have very negative uh, environmental impacts. Um, uh, so taken on, on its on its own merits, I think it, it, it would uh, it'd be very very hard to support. Uh, I think it is it is absolutely crucial that and um, Councillor Herbert has um, described this that we need to look at this in the context of the of the whole of the um, strategy of um, the Greater Cambridge Partnership. Um, and I think the previous item uh, uh, um, was was vital that the work that's being done on the city access is vital for that. Um, uh, uh, so th th this, this can be part of a comprehensive strategy to reduce um, congestion, to improve air quality over the whole area um, and, uh, uh, and to, to um, uh, make a contribution um, to, to how we are um, reducing our impact on, on climate change. Uh, specifically with this site, I think there are some, have, have been some big changes from when it was first uh, discussed um, uh, early in the GCP um, life. Uh, thinking of it more as a travel, travel hub, I think is important for that, uh, how it will fit in with the, with the future uh, um, uh, network, which we'll be seeing more over the coming months. Um, that's an important change, uh, that it's not just a, just a car park. Um, uh, that's, that's vital, I think. Um, the, the work that's been done now on the Foxton um, Park and Rail site, uh, again, um, uh, that, that can now, given that we've progressed that, can now be taken into account in further work that we, have, um, we are now going to do on the, um, the Hawkston uh, Travel Hub. Um, the uh, more thought given to, to how, the, how it integrates into the walking, walking and cycling network, both um, uh, into South Cams and into the, into the city. Um, that's crucial. Uh, and then also the, 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 the broader um, uh, work being done on uh, the Cambridge Biomedical Campus's um, uh, issues. We've had the, the study recently. We've got the um, uh, work on the, um, the, the um, public transport route in from the Grant Park. Um, uh, and, and then there is, a, I mean, for example, uh, the, the work that's being done um, by the employers on the Biomedical Campus on, on really detailed uh, individual travel planning, uh, the, the H bus. Uh, that's, that's now up and running, getting people to from um, Patworth and Camborne, uh, I think is crucial. Um, so that, so that this, this shouldn't be seen in isolation um, as, as um, uh, um, because if it is, you, you, it does, does um, uh, it, uh, it, would, it would be very hard to support in isolation. Um, uh, and it was also encouraging that I think um, that we're now looking at these projects explicitly in the previous one, um, and I think uh, hopefully it's a little bit implicit in this, that um, in terms of their impact on air quality and the impact on climate change, and um, uh, all the councils now have a, a, a zero carbon ambition, uh, and it should be um, looked at in, those, in that context. So on, on that basis, um, I think I would, be, I would be happy to, well, not happy, I will be supporting this. Um, so uh, if there are any more comments, I think we can go to the vote. So, um, uh, and, Good to have uh, votes in favour of the recommendations, HC as amended. So um, we're all uh, unanimously um, supporting that, the uh, recommendations. Um, thank you very much. So we now have S um, the uh, Cambridge South East uh, Transport Study. Uh, for, the, for this item, uh, we also have, we will I'd like to start off with the um, uh, chair of the LLF, who uh, is here, yes, yes, yes Councillor um, Orji. Um, if you'd like to come forward, then we'll have our question. We've got a, a question on this. Um, uh, and then um, uh, and then we'll debate the report. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
just so that we can get the yes, machine. Yes, I think we will have a few calls. We were almost there. Yeah, okay, yes, that's fine. Right. I'll, I'll yeah, just a bit swipe through. Sorry. Sorry. So um, uh, Councillor Wotherspoon um, gave a little report on uh, his report on the um, work of the assembly. He didn't say too much on this because he, he knew that you were coming, so uh, okay. to avoid. Uh, Thanks very much. I'm still waiting for it to just come off. But uh, basically, this is going to be a report on the workshop that was carried out um, uh, in, in, in April and a subsequent public meeting of the local liaison forum. We talked about two different types of issues, and it really starts at section six in your report. Uh, the meeting itself had a, a presentation on the uh, phase one interventions along the 1307 um, that was very well received. It set out the timetable for all the remaining interventions which have to be carried out and reported on those interventions which have already been completed. Uh, there was uh, support for the meetings that had taken place between uh, the consultants and local parishes mm -hmm. and um, the view that we wanted to express very much was that we would like those meetings to continue into the future. So we think there's been good practice in the past, and we'd simply like that engagement with local communities at an early stage to continue. Um, in terms of um, the off-road strategies, strategy and, and the various um, site proposals for park and ride sites uh, and uh, routes, uh, there were a few general comments. I think it's still clear that there continues to be a great deal of confusion about who is responsible for what. And in particular in this area, um, the section northwards from the Cape Biomedical Campus and the section south eastwards from Grutter Park is not work that's been done by GCP, that in a sense belongs to the Mayor and Combined Authority. But this part between the Cambridge Biomedical Campus and Grutter Park is a Greater Cambridge Partnership work. And I think, in a sense, that needs to be clarified with the public and also to say where responsibility and accountability lies uh, throughout the combined authority, city council, district council, county council, and working parties and advisory groups. And it was suggested that it would be a good idea if, say, a one-page document could be provided to set out those relationships to, to aid public clarity as to who was responsible for what. Um, in terms of the discussions, um, both at the workshop and at the meeting, um, there were some alternatives put forward to the schemes that you see in uh, the maps at the back of the report, and those two alternatives are both referred to in the report. One is an extension along the line of the former railway right into Great Shelford, that's in paragraph 734, and also an alternative suggestion for uh, a park and ride site or travel hub, um, which is set out in paragraph 732. I think that suggestion in 732 uh, really came forward because all the three sites that are being proposed for a travel hub are on good quality agricultural land, and it was felt that a site which had some elements of brownfield sites as well as being relatively well for agriculture might be an alternative that was worth pursuing. So there were those alternatives put forward, and as I said, they're both referenced in the report. Um, as I say, there was concern as to who was responsible for what, 
Um, and there was also, um, and that in a sense also relates to the issue of joined up thinking, because one of the representatives or people present at the um, public meeting uh, was from Haverhill, and he talked about another 4,000 houses being proposed in Haverhill and more uh, employment expansion. And so there was a question as to whether all that had actually been taken account of in these figures. And I know we've got a very, very moving situation where things are virtually coming forward on almost a day-by-day -day basis in this area, but that there was that concern had always been taken uh, into account. Um, there were some site-specific um, concerns, um, in particular in relation to um, Site C, and those are set out in paragraph 728. Um, there's one uh, question that I would like uh, to, to raise at this point. In a sense, when this transport study was set up, it was initially referred to as the three campuses to Cambridge, in a sense, relating the biomedical campus, the Baybrum Research Campus, and Grantor Park. And um, when you then look at some of the sites being proposed for um, the, the travel hubs, the question is how do they relate? to those in particular, Baybrook and Granter Park, and also how do they relate to the Mayor, combined authorities, future proposals um, further on to Hayfield. Um, you'll see in the um, documentation it does refer to, to those particular sites and their views on each of the three park and those sites. Um, so, that was the flavour of the meetings. There was no suggestion to take out any of the proposals that you see in front of you today. Um, and uh, the two alternatives, certainly in the case of the extension to uh, Great Shelford, if there's been a commitment to provide a response to that. Um, and in the case of the other site, I was just surprised that somebody didn't ask a question at this meeting about it, because there were one or two people who were uh, very much in uh, support of in further investigation. So I hope I've given you a favour yeah. of the meeting, and I hope that's been constructive. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Thank you very much. Um, are there any points that you'd like to address? To... No, I mean, yeah. I'll just give a, yeah. a, a, say, a, 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 a flavour of, of, of the sort of the discussion and the different yeah. views that, that are out there. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I think we'd all like to thank you very much for all the work that you're doing and all the other the other that is doing on, on this, which is um, I, 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 I produce. Not everyone might be happy with it, but it's, it's produced a very good result that, that uh, um, uh, yes, I think you should be pleased with it. Okay, yeah, and if I couldn't make a final point on that, is yes. when it comes to a public consultation, it is important to engage as much as possible. And I know in previous consultations, uh, there have been widespread circulation of documents. And I, I went to a consultation meeting on the Babram High Street um, uh, just a few days ago. Um, and it would be good when it comes to the consultation in the autumn if documents could be circulated, in particular to the Abington and Pampas at Abram, because uh, there's a travel hub site in each of those parishes. And I think that's important, Chair. And we'd also say that we will produce the one page you've suggested. Mm -hmm. And of course, we will want to continue with the, the meetings. Mm -hmm. the, the, as you say, I think have gone very well, even, even though there's differences in opinion. Yeah. Actually, having that engagement has yeah. been quite positive. But in sense, the one page is, is wider than this local liaison form mm. and this scheme. It's in the sense that there is this lack of understanding who's responsible for what and mm. who's accountable. Yeah. Okay. Yes, good. Thank you very much. So, uh, and uh, to the, the, the consultation that we're being asked to move forward on will, will be uh, 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 quite a comprehensive one. Thank you very much. Um, so, do we have um, Archie Gardner here? Yes. Would you like to come forward and uh, sit at the table? Thank you very much. Um, so, yes, so you, you've, you've, got a, you've got a question, so you've got uh, three minutes to uh, ask your question, and you could really, you can ask it extremely slowly if you like. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, so, there, there's a traffic light system where it's green while you've got plenty of time, uh, uh, orange when you're uh, half a minute before the end, and then red when you've had your, your three minutes. Uh, so it's, um, um, once you've asked your question, then I'll, I'll ask Mr. Blake to, to respond to your question. Super. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and uh, councillors. Uh, so the question is, we are disappointed to see that the papers provided to this meeting do not identify the fact that an alternative route for the proposed transit corridor for Strategy 1 needs to be properly assessed. 
Um, and I, I heard the answer given uh, from your previous public speaker. Um, but the important thing is that there is a lot of work planned for the railway in sections at, at um, Great Shelford and beyond. Um, and uh, we, we do believe the, the parish, and I think the residence meeting there was very strongly uh, opposed to the, um, uh, the, the proposals that were presented to us because they miss um, Stapleford and Shelford. They go through the green belt north of the, um, uh, the villages. Uh, the Ordnance Survey map shows the old railway line route, which apparently is being used earlier on in the, um, the proposed strategy one. Um, and if it was linked, it would deliver services to many more residents of Sawston, Stapleford and the Shelfords than the proposals in the documents presented, and I refer to the, the map. And if you look at those maps on uh, strategy one, you'll see this line going just right through the countryside skirting the north, I think it's page 183 in your um, handout, 183 beyond. So if you uh, go on to any one of them, we'll show you, but all of the routes, say page 187 is the one I'm looking at, for example, and you'll see the brown route just goes through Greenbelt from source to non. Okay. Uh, and so it misses the, the, the big, um, uh, public areas of Sawston, Stapleford, and the Shelters. Uh, additionally, the Strategy 1 proposals as outlined would have a devastating impact on the Green Belt as well as the wildlife habits, and uh, we got that from the Cambridge Wildlife Trust. Representatives of the Parish Council have been assured that the alternative route is being properly assessed, so not from what we've heard before that reasons would be given, but that a proper assessment would happen. Uh, further robust representation has been made by the Stapleford and Shelford neighbourhood planning process. Uh, so that's my statement. Thanks, yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. And my question stands. Yes. Thank you very much. Very yes. so, uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so, so in a sense, actually, that just emphasises why we want to get into a formal consultation so we can we can air and, and, and have these uh, have these discussions. We have promised that we will provide you with a with a full response um, before you wrote in. Yeah. To this question, and we will do that. The draft is, is is almost ready to go. I mean, the the short answer is it doesn't fit um, in terms of the need to protect the existing main line, and then the impact, particularly around Shelford Station, on residential and businesses, uh, and the need to go around the station environment, and, and, and frankly, like knocking people's houses down. Or, 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 or taking bits of car parks and things. Um, but we, we have promised that we'll provide you with the, the full response of that, and we will. But again, I think just to come back to my, to my initial point, that's exactly why we want to get into that level of constant consultation so we can produce this information in the public domain, and then we can listen to, to local communities and local parishes on their, on their views. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Um, do, if you're right, if I might just pick up the, the point about the uh, impact on, on wildlife habitats. Um, will, will there be some information in the consultation on, on, on that that, that people will be able to respond to? There, there will be some information on, on that. I mean, I would, I would actually expect I would take issue with that assessment. Um, but there will be information in the, in the consultation yes. to, to draw that out. And then as the scheme progresses, we'll have exactly the same conversation that we just had around uh, the Southwest Travel Hub in terms of how we manage that, how we mitigate that, and indeed how do we improve um, the sort of local environment where, where we can, particularly what are the walking and cycling connections to, to, to the roof. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to have to come back to uh, Mr. Blake uh, and ask him to introduce the report. Um, uh, so, so in, in, in a sense, yeah, I haven't got a, a great deal to add other than it's already been raised by, by the, the liaison forum chair and the, and the questioner. Progress is being made on the, on the sort of stage one schemes um, as, uh, as promised. You previously agreed that the, the off-road strategy was the route, the, the, the route to go down. Um, what we've done is we've done a, a very extensive technical assessment in terms of the sifting process, as we're obliged to do by uh, Department of Transport uh, regulations. 
<coughs> me. That has brought us to, to a number of travel hub options and a number of route alignments associated with that that are outlined in the appendices. And what we're seeking for is uh, your approval to get into public uh, consultation so we can ex have exactly the, the, cons the, the consultation and discussion that the questioner and, uh, and the, the chair of the meeting for just, uh, just okay. outlined. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Um, do, do we have any, uh, well, first instance, do we have any questions um, for uh, the officers? Who have, uh, I'm afraid you're not going to have a very exciting meeting. <laughs> there are no questions. Uh, we'd like to make any comments, uh, Councillor Herbert. Well, I'll just, I mean, I think it's slightly confusing having all of these changes <coughs> of uh, maps and different plans, which effectively is what we've got. Um, if I'm uh, just help me, uh, Mr. Blake, if you can just confirm my um, sort of uh, relatively limited um, brain assessment of the, um, uh, of the of the maps in front of us in the different figures. So effectively, we're, 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 we are consulting on a uh, an indicative route, but but one route as far as uh, it goes from. Uh, the biomedical campus to Sawston Road is my calculation, and then some minor variations. Yeah, so we, we, we're down to a an indicative route, but could, could perhaps um, the project lead just give us some, some sort of a, a bit more uh, a description about what the variations are that would be looked at between the biomedical campus and Sawston Road. And then we're looking at three options for travel hubs, um, but with some different ways of getting to them. So um, I, I'm just I'm interested partly for my own uh, brain process, but also for how it's going to get communicated to the public. Um, so um, could you just give us a bit more about this indicative route, about what the variations are? Obviously. Uh, as has been asked by Archie Garden, there will be need to be quite a narrative to explain why it's not going the route to link up with the, the Liverpool Street Railway line, and also some narrative about why it's not going the options that were previously up for grabs, but not now. If yeah, so, it, so there will be a full narrative in the um, options appraisal report and the outline business case which we'll be bringing to you after the consultation process has been completed and we will be providing information on the um, alternative travel hub site and the alternative route via the Shelford station um, in the near future. You're quite correct, the route is essentially the same as far as Sawston. And we are putting quite a lot of work into how we depict this in the consultation material and how we communicate the, the variation. So essentially the consultation material, there will only be one line over that section because the route is the same. Underlying that is quite detailed work, which underpins the environmental assessment work, which will be reported in the, um, the, in the consultation um, material that will be available. Beyond Sawston Road, there are essentially two variations in terms of route. Uh, one takes, it, if you like, a shortcut across the River Granta Valley um, up towards the A11 at Four Wentways. And the other follows the old railway line down towards the A505 and then follows the A505 in the A11 um, going to the north. So there are two then two root variations in that respect. The remaining variations are simply then tied up with the three potential travel hub locations, site A, site B and site C. Site C requires the route to be extended via a bridge over the A11. Um, and then following part of the old A1307 before it was diverted when the A11 was built uh, and then crossing the A1307 to end up in Site C. Um, site B is located on the uh, west side of the A11 and could be served either by the brown route or the, the pink route. 
Uh, and then the final travel hub location, site A, is located close to the A505. So essentially the public transport route would go no further than that. To address some of the comments regarding the onward extension, um, that is a later phase of study with the CAM project, so there are by no means a defined route for that at the moment. That's um, the route going across the a Park. That would be a route onwards towards Linton and Haverhill. Um, but at the moment we are, with varying degrees of complexity, all those three sites could potentially serve the potential variations of how it might be extended. What, B and C? Yes, and, and A indeed. And A, yes. So, so, just to pursue the issue of the indicative route, um, how much uh, input will there be about sort of how it um, skirts Great Shelford and Stapleford and Sawston? And, and what does the indi indicative route actually stand for? Is, I'm, I'm just a bit unclear about what range you're talking about in terms of where the the uh, which in practical terms is where the where will it cross Granham's Road um, I can't read that one Haverhill Road um, and Sawston Road. We, we looked at a number of or our consultants looked at a number of route variations some were further away from Great Shelford and Stapleford mm -hmm. Um, they reduced some of the environmental impact. However, we recognise the, the importance of serving those communities and therefore the proposed stop locations are located as close as possible to those communities as constraints around design, environmental mitigation, and providing access. to the nearest property. Yes. yes, so there'll need to be some um, environmental buffer between one and the other but we are locating them as close as possible and we're also considering how we can um, improve the communication from within those communities to those um, to those, those stops. And will there, will there therefore be consistent principles in those three indicative uh, junctions? Yes, they'll all be fairly consistent. They'll be very similar to the stops on the existing guided busway. Um, and it's really a question of just how we connect those into the local network. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, are there any, any further comments on this? Just a uh, yeah, couple of things. The first actually is I did go to the workshop, okay, um, and there was a lot of people there. It was very constructive. Congratulations to Tony in, uh, in what took place, and also uh, each t there was tables. Uh, each table had a facilitator and people from uh, our consultants. So I thought it was well run and well organised. Um, in answer to Tony Orgy's question about the uh, liaison forum, I think I'm not sure what you call it, but you know what I mean. Um, that certainly should continue. Mm. It's done a good job so far. Um, yes, I think we do need, I, I have in my mind exactly who has responsibility, Tony, but uh, I think we do need to communicate that to a wider field than just the, the board members and others, so uh, a one page would be most useful, please, just so that uh, I think I know who has that responsibility, so uh, I think it would be useful to circulate that as widely as possible, uh, indeed. Um, I have actually travelled the whole route, I've looked at all the park and line sites, I've looked at all the possible opportunities about whether it's a pink, a brown or a black or any other colour, I've actually toured those. Uh, I think it's quite important actually, uh, Councillor Herbert raised it about the, the bus stops, one of the things that uh, when we were touring, it, particularly obviously around the villages and the three villages that, that are on that route, that they have access. And the way to get the access is to put the right bus stop in the right place. <laughs> Okay, and that's one thing that I actually, when we were touring it all, um, I said yes, we must have them um, at appropriate. I, I might put in more than one or two or three, and we need to consider that I think at some point, because some, some of them are quite big villages, and they've got extensive possibly developments coming on uh, in the future. 
the difficulty I had actually when I toured the whole area uh, was actually coming on to the biomedical centre. Um, and actually when you come on to the biomedical centre, um, it's fair to say um, it's a bit torturous going around their small little roads. Um, and that is a bit of concern, actually, to me. I think the principles of having, uh, whether it's A or B or C, I think is yet to be decided, which is the routes, close to, the, close to those villages, having bus stops, yes. Continue the work that the liaison forum is doing, doing, which is good. My one question really is, how engaged is the biomedical centre in this discussion? Uh, bearing in mind, Royal Patworth is on, we're going to have a children's hospital. But actually, when you drive round it, and I did drive round it, thank, thank you to, uh, to the people that did the driving, um, the Biomedical Centre is not perhaps perfect, let me put it that way. Uh, I think if you were doing your exam paper, it could, could do better, it might be. So my concern actually is not so much about what's been said here, but it's engagement with the Biomedical Centre and the work that needs to happen on that side, which reflects back, I think, to the report which received last time. And I think that actually needs to be more formally uh, agreed with the liaison forum and get more than just one person from Adam Brooks attending, albeit my ex hospital. If, if I could just, uh, just clarify on that, Ian, is that we have met with the biomedical campus and Cambridge Medical Park and the Pemberton Trust. They are all yeah. supportive of the proposals, but of course the devil is in the detail. Yeah. And we have broad agreement on the principle of routing along Francis Creek Avenue to the guided busway bridge. Yeah. But we do need to work out the details of stops and how those relate to trips within the campus by people with varying age and, uh, age and ability. Um, to serve you know, what is a very large site. Just, can I just come back on that? Um, I've had somebody that has contacted me that um, works down at the Royal Hatworth, and of course the guided bus does go, go through it. But actually there are problems on the site currently in respect of the, um, I suppose you'd call it a complaint or comment, um, and it's not actually working quite well with the new bus stop outside the... Uh, well, Patworth Hospital, like it's not working, uh, and I think we do. That comes back to we do need to engage with the big employer on the actual route. Okay, uh, we do need to engage. I think obviously with the uh, biomedical centre, but also on the uh, the other people that are further out, which is the Welcome and Grafton Park, etc. How they plumb plumbing into it. We, there has been quite a lot of cycleways. Are done around that area. Mm. I know my own one. Yeah. Um, so I think we need to engage with them, uh, look particularly to Tony about how they're engaged in, in perhaps having cycling uh, from their centres into uh, some whichever park and ride site it is. But I think we do need to engage with that particular community because there are, they are different organisations. Um, you know, the Bay Room is different to Welkinham and, and they, they all need to be plumbed into, I think, the discussion. So I would encourage uh, Tony Orji to engage, I think, a little more and us on the Welkinham handle, but also the Biomedical Centre. Other than that, Mr Chairman, nothing else. Just, uh, just a little follow up on that. So when, when, the, uh, when you're, the consultation is being developed, that will include um, some indicative detail about about how uh, the, the the route could come onto the biomedical campus. It, it will do, yes. And, and, that, and that will actually probably stimulate quite a lot of engagement, not just from the, the, the people who manage the campus, but also the people who use it. Um, uh, I think that would be extremely beneficial. Yes, it, 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 will, it, it will, will be, yes. Yes, okay, well, thank you very much. Um, okay, um, uh, if there's no more comments on that, I think we could um, uh, move to a vote. Um, uh, if you'd like to um, support the recommendation, could you, uh, um, so the recommendation is as on page, um, page, page 172, um, to, to move towards a public consultation essentially. Um, if you'd like to support the recommendations, um, please could you indicate? That is uh, unanimous support for those I, I was going to say a bit more, but it would only prolong the meeting. But I do like to, I would like to thank the local liaison forum and obviously welcome the need and value of further engagement with each of the communities along the way. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, just to check it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. Thank you.
Um, uh, if everyone would like to continue for the, um, uh, the remaining um, two substantive items, or would you like a pause for a minute? No, that's okay. Well, let, 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 let's, let's press on then. Um, so uh, we now have item 11, um, which is uh, the uh, rail corridor study. Uh, so um, if you'd like to, which is on page 193, um, uh, if you'd like to say a word or two, uh, Mr Blake, on this. Thank you, Chair. Just a short report. Uh, members will be aware that the, the Secretary of State published this uh, study some, some time ago now. Uh, this We part funded this working with, with, with partners in the rail industry to really forward look at what the rail requirements are in our area up to the, the time frame of 2043. Um, two scenarios were used, the standard department for, for transport scenario level and then a level beyond that that, that more accurately reflects local growth within the Greater Cambridge area. To, as you would imagine, two slightly different sets of, of rail requirements uh, come out which are outlined in the report. Principally the difference is on the, the, the line that was raised by uh, the, the, the Chair of the Joint Assembly previously, the Newmarket line, in that with a higher growth rate there is a far greater requirement for, for additional services on, on the line coming in from, uh, from, from Newmarket to, to reflect that. And then just finally, uh, briefly on, on Cambridge South, <coughs> As, as, as the Chair of the Joint Assembly referenced, this was included in the base case, so it was assumed that Cambridge South would be delivered as part of this study. There is no certainty on that yet, whilst we are progressing the scheme with our partners, um, there really needs to be a focus on ensuring that that scheme comes forward as soon as practicable. Thank you, Chair. Was, uh, thank you very much. Um, <coughs> any, any comments or questions on this one? Yes. Yes. Um, well, I, I, I don't think we're getting best value out of the rail system. Um, and I appreciate the, uh, the need for us to focus on Cambridge South. And I, I value the fact that we have this report and the dialogue with Network Rail. So yes, um, we do need to focus on getting Cambridge South delivered because um, as a piece of rail infrastructure, um, it's something that other cities aren't getting and we need. Um, and Network Rail in the past hasn't been that, uh, easy to talk to, but we're in a really good stage and state in terms of that dialogue. Um, I'm not asking for a change to the recommendations, but, but I, I would ask Chair if we record a couple of points, if others agree with them. First, that Cambridge Station Central Station is already <coughs> under huge pressure, um, and as the also the ward councillor for the east side, um, we uh, now welcome, um, whereas we wouldn't have had that view a couple of years ago, um, a second access. Um, and I just think that we we've just got to continue in the background arguing for improvements to Cambridge Station because it. it um, it is severely overloaded already, and it's grown quickly from 5 million trips to, I think, 12 million, if I'm correct. Um, and it's going to continue to grow, um, including with more trips from Cambridge North and the new station. So I'd just like, if people are uh, in agreement, just to record that we need to continue to assist the improvements there, and also outside the station. Um, I think it's really welcome that Network Rail, or sorry, the train operating companies assisted by government funding are improving secure cycle parking, mm -hmm. um, which facilitates more use of the train system near Cambridge also for cycles to be used and moved. Um, and then the, a, a point of a disappointment in a way, because in the report where it suggests that somehow we don't need to think about the new market line um, and the wider line into Suffolk until 2043, um, I just think we just should record for our own purposes and also working with the combined authority that that really misses, misses a trick because in addition to the potential opportunity for a station at uh, Fallbourne and Cherry Hinton or both through one, but also just the fact that it's it's uh, it, it, it
make some of the Titchfield Thunderbolt um, coverage look just look really inadequate because it's a two-car train, and I've tried to I have tried to travel that line, uh, including at the peak time. And if it had the quality of uh, even just the quality of uh, carriages that are on the Ely line, four carriages would be nice, not twelve. Um, I just see that a lot more people would arrive from that area. And when we look back to the first report we discussed today about the travel to work area, there are a large number of people that come in by car from um, West Suffolk, from Milton Hall, from uh, Brandon, from Bury St Edmunds, as well as from um, points um, that would find Newmarket and Bellingham. Um, and potentially the Mayor's project of a Surrey railway station, um, a real alternative. So I think it's a really valuable piece of work. Uh, some of it's highly technical, but I just think we should um, limit the support for further uh, focus on the capacity of Cambridge Central Station and the fact that whilst we note uh, Network Rail's view about the route out to Suffolk, that we will continue to do work on it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the uh, Chair of the Joint Assembly wanted to indicate that you want to go make a Yes, I'm going to uh, pick up a little bit on what, uh, uh, what I think I expressed was a sort of feeling of frustration uh, on uh, the part of Joint Assembly members um, that there didn't appear to be any aspiration to increase rail mode share in this report. And I know you've all read the full report because it's only 28 pages long. And, uh, and you'll be aware that while the report starts off by considering the two uh, growth scenarios, the, the extraordinarily conservative rate of Green Book one, and then the more realistic uh, you know, trend growth rate that we, even the local plans have, have um, uh, uh, envisaged. But if you look at figures three and four, those um, track uh, and capacity enhancements are only based on scenario one, which is the extreme, extremely conservative one. Now, fortunately, those do not uh, preclude uh, uh, additional uh, infrastructure uh, required for more um, ambitious and realistic growth rates. But, I mean, it's worth bearing in mind, uh, Councillor Herbert alluded to this just now, that um, demand at Cambridge Station, even in King's Lynn, has seen average yearly growth of about 5% a year over the last 10 years. And so that has resulted in a doubling of rail passenger demand between Cambridge and Stansted Airport, Water Beach, Newmarket, Norwich, March, and Bury St Edmunds. And the demand between Cambridge, Ipswich, Stevenage, Letchworth, Littleport, and Littlesford has increased by just over 90%. In other words, it's about the same sort of doubling of, of, of pattern. So, uh, uh, Councillor Bates used the phrase, could do better <laughs> in the meeting. I, I think um, when, when Councillor Bates alludes, uh, sorry, Councillor Herbert alludes to the fact that we don't get best value for money out of our local rail service, I think we could put our local rail service to much better use than we currently do. And that was a view that um, I feel I ought to convey on behalf of the Joint Assembly. Thank you. I'm glad to be in agreement with you again. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think with that one to prolong the debate too much, I think we could, well, we're asking a question how we can um, sort of follow up on this. Um, the recommendations as they are, they are, are don't have any follow up. What, what role could we, the GC, it's not the, the GCB can't take on the, the championing of the rail in, in a rail as an alternative um, uh, as a mode um, in the area, but I think that we can continue to be involved in, the, in, the, in that evolution. Um, uh, possibly we can. I mean, there needs some some follow-up possibly in the in the broader uh, quarterly reporting. I'm not sure. Um, I mean, it can be South, for example, I think it's essential that we follow it up. Yeah. 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 Okay. We, that, yeah, we can provide updates in the quarterly progress report on rail because it's really through influence and mm. lobbying that we can yeah. achieve some of that. We're more directly involved in Cambridge South, though, and we update regularly. Yes, yes. Okay. 
Okay, um, uh, so if there's any more comments, and then I think we could um, uh, go to a rush on this. Uh, um, they want to yeah, just, 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 just to be clear that we um, we value the progress we're making with the work right now, but there's further discussions. Okay, yeah. just a, just a few comments. I think um, I think it does 42 could do better. It's a category. Um, when you look at the West Anglian Task Force, which is actually quite crucial actually for trains going into London, there's the issue of um, it going to sort of Suffolk and Norfolk um, and Newmarket and Barry Sedmans is quite crucial. Um, there is a lot of work happening, but actually you can look about uh, freight as well with around Ely area, all of that is quite in, very important. My one really, uh, I have Travelled the the line as well from into Ipswich, and, and you know I didn't do it a second time. Um, the reason being is it, it isn't uh, that comfortable. Uh, it's going to be nice, but also actually when you look about uh, some of the franchises, for instance, um, if you like Cambridge North Station, country uh, trains are, are not stopping there still. So it is actually also quite crucial to engage with the operators sometimes. But one question really is, who is leading in this capacity across the county? Because it does include, uh, you know, Ely's and, and, and further further fields. So is the combined authority going to be the lead um, authority that we give assistance to and help with, but all the other districts? So who's the lead authority in negotiating working with Network Rail as we go forward with the growth agenda that we've all got? So the, the, the combined authority are the Strategic Transport Authority. They will, they will set the policy direction. Network Rail deliver improvements on a scheme-by-scheme -scheme basis. So that so the lead will change depending upon the scheme that we're looking at. But, if I just come, I, I actually believe if you get more traction with network rail, if there is one lead authority that actually goes and, and knocks on the door of Secretary of State, network rail, etc., etc., I think that's actually quite important actually to get a lead authority that actually has that responsibility, and I think it needs to be further discussed. But th th that's something then we could take up with the combined authority. Um, if the command authority wished to um, take that lead role, um, uh, it would need to do so in conjunction with the other authorities, yeah. such as GCP and, and the county council and the respective district councils. Yeah. Um, but um, I think that would be very welcome. Um, but it's also wider that. than that, actually, when you look about um, Norfolk and Suffolk and Essex and etc. So it, it is a bigger picture um, than just this county. Yes. Okay. Yes. So okay. Thank you. Um, so back to the recommendations. Uh, is everyone happy to adopt the recommendations? Good yeah. indicate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Marvellous. Unanimous. Um, thank you. So on to the um, uh, quarterly progress report. Um, uh, Hello. Uh, if, uh, so, Chris, 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 so, uh, um, if you would, between yeah. you, uh, I'm sure you've had very carefully. Who's going to be? Yes, right. Okay, excellent. Good. Uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, so, I uh, just want to say that the public uh, comment is that the progress report sets out broadly where we are across all of our work streams. Uh, it's fair to say we're probably, probably on track with where we ought to be. Um, there's a couple of things in here that, that, that aren't usually in here, which I want to draw your attention to. Um, recommendation C, I think perhaps we'll come back to it in a minute. Um, Rachel will take you through that. Um, but on page 213, section 20, uh, we're asking the board to improve, uh, improve uh, in investment in, in projects. I just thought I'd give you 30 seconds on what, on what that is. Uh, so we were approached by the university, um, a consortium, led by the university rather, uh, to, to see whether or not we were interested in funding an inward investment vehicle essentially, or the start of looking at an inward investment vehicle. So, so what we're asking the board for is, uh, is, a, is a 25k investment um, to get involved in the first phase of this work, which ends around the autumn time. 
uh, which will essentially uh, give us a view as to whether or not um, the Human Investment Service uh, will, and what it, will, what it will look like. Uh, so if anyone's got yeah. questions on that, we'll have Sorry. to take Go on, we're going to see something. Yes. So, what, um, what I would um, like to do then is uh, um, split up sort of the, the, the two uh, dis sort of positive decisions that we're being asked to make, um, cover those, and then and then come back to any um, uh, 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 other questions on the on the quality of board and or on the finances. Um, uh, so, uh, in the in the um, well. Uh, um, Need mentioned that you would like to, if you want to say anything on 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 C. Well, just um, just broadly, as section 17 of the report states, chair, uh, the combined authority um, is the lead uh, organisation for bringing forward the um, uh, Cambridgeshire Autonomous Metro. Uh, as members of the board are aware, we are making a significant contribution to phase one, the above ground section on the corridor schemes, one of which we've been talking about earlier today. Uh, but in coming forward with the um, outline business case, uh, the combined authority has asked whether the Greater Cambridge Partnership would be prepared to make a contribution uh, to the funding of that business case, which they estimate to be between two to three million pounds. The combined authority is currently only allocated one million to that. Um, and obviously, the substantial part of that will deliver the tunnel section of the CAM network, which is you know, widely seen as being a transformational element to the CAM network, which GCP would like to support. So really it's a question for the board as to whether A would like to support, if so, uh, by how much. The suggestion or the recommendation on your paper is to uh, allocate £300,000 or, or up to 10% of the total cost of the outline business case. Uh, but picking up on Councillor Witherspoon's comments from the Assembly, the suggestion and the recommendation is that we would only do that if we secure a memorandum of understanding in order to um, set out more clearly what our levels of influence and what points uh, we would expect to um, have more of a say over if we were making that sort of investment in the Caroline business case. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so we, there, there was a proposed uh, amendment, which I think has been distributed um, uh, in relation to uh, um, point C on the recommendations. Um, so, uh, as previously, I think I would, we would like to take the amendment first, um, and then and then proceed with that, and then and then uh, depending on the results of that, uh, debate the amended or unamended uh, recommendations. Um, so, uh, Councillor Bates uh, as a okay. as a proposed uh, amendment, if you could present that. Please. Okay, I, I think uh, you've seen the uh, change that I've proposed. It is only the figure that I'm talking about. It's see everything else will remain as is. I think actually, to just bring members up to date, members of the public, that there was the CAM board which met last week. I think uh, people, for instance, were from the university, I think the vice chancellor was present, business were present, local authorities were present. Um, and um, so, so, so would be that, and yourself was also present at, at that meeting. What I've circulated actually is some background information, and uh, the background information is there at the top of the uh, back background information, and then the terms of reference are taken directly from the paper which was uh, presented to the board, the new board, last week. And I think it actually just demonstrates actually what I call the willingness on the combined authority to work in partnership with the Greater Cambridge Partnership. And therefore, that's one of the reasons, that, and the only reason, why I think our contribution should be bigger. Uh, and therefore, that is why I propose that amendment. And particularly, for instance, the combined authority and the Greater Cambridge Partnership are working in partnership to promote the CAM Metro project. I think actually it is about working in partnership, and therefore, to demonstrate that, I feel the figure of as proposed in the papers of 300 was not the right figure and that is why I proposed the amendment of being five. I think I could have I could have put in a million pounds, okay, of course. Um, I didn't. I thought it was more reasonable uh, for the figure that I actually in the amendment proposed. So I'm looking for that to be perhaps discussed and debated about that particular figure. The point really is that we have that influence um, and therefore it is important actually that we contribute in our financial sense as well as in a partnership sense and that is what the message that was conveyed last week to the university, to business etc that we're working together and therefore 
propose that amendment, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, um, should, we, should we take it in the same way that we did it before, where we can discuss the amendment uh, on the well, House Committee? I mean, I'd just like to ask, Ian, as a point of clarification, that amendment effectively says um, to me that it would need to, the outline business case would need to cost more than um, three million before the um, before the uh, Greater Cambridge Partnership would be agreeing to increase the uh, funding above the three hundred k. Sorry, I'm not. Well, I'm, I'm, just I'm, looking, not sorry. I'm not clear. I'm, Chair, I'm, 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 you know, I'm just looking at the wording of the amendment. Okay. So, if you look at the amendment in front of us, I'm just checking for my understanding that effectively the amendment says it, it, it can increase to 500k, yeah. but it would be uh, based on uh, their. I'm um, uh, sorry if I'm a bit slow. It's been a long day. Yeah. But um, but the it, it's based on this assumption that, that the GCP would only be expected to pay. If it's its proportion, but if the cost of the outline business case was uh, above um, three million, is the reference to ten percent, Councillor Bates? Ten percent. Yeah. So, yeah, sorry, so yeah, we're yeah. saying it's limited to ten percent of the total cost up to a maximum. Yeah. Well, so, okay. Um, yeah, I understand the point. Uh, I mean, I agree with the memorandum of understanding. Uh, I think it, it deserves a little bit more of commitment on behalf of this authority um, to uh, to go forward in the partnership. Um, uh, I'm, I think I have to leave. I just wanted to clarify that point. And I'll, 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 I'll think you need like to sort of tip in and then, 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 then leave. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm late for another meeting now. But, um, I really just wanted to say that I was reluctantly persuaded to support the 300,000. I think that's as far as I'd be comfortable to go. So I support the recommendation as, as is and not the amendments, fortunately, um, tailored by Councillor Bates. Okay. Thank you very much. That's very helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry, Thank you. <laughs> just, uh, I mean, uh, just as a comment from myself, I, um, uh, I, I also need to have evidence-based expenditure, and my uh, concern is that whilst I fully support the need for a strong outline business case, including particularly um, addressing the funding strategy, um, it, it, it isn't yet clear what, what the uh, combined authorities plan is for that OBC. Um, I'm not in supporting 300,000 in saying that we couldn't pay more, but this is what we can start. And if it's what we are proposing now, um, I, I think that it, it does need to be clearer from the combined authority what their intentions are, whilst I do welcome the creation of that board. So I'm not ruling out us um, having a second dip into our funds, but I just think this is, um, I would support um, 300,000 at this point. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, this is a formal um, uh, proposal for uh, an amendment to the resident, um, uh, uh, the next stage obviously is to get a seconder and uh, I'll second it, second it for the, the, the same vote. spirit okay. as I right. seconded the first time. Thank you very much. Um, uh, would you like to say anything further on, on this? Um, I'll, just, I'll just say one thing very quickly and you can sum up. I, I think like it's it. a disappointment actually to hear um, from the university actually because the Vice Chancellor sat at the board meeting. Okay, so I think there's a very disappointment that uh, the representative from the university is not supporting his vice chancellor. Um, actually, disappointed actually that I think the figure is too low. I think the figure better would be the proposal I'm making, and that's because we need to work in partnership. We need to have that influence about what's happening. What happens next month, next year, in two years' time? I think is another day. Um, I therefore think it, it gives gives the right message, the commitment that this authority would give to the CAM Metro, which at the end of the day actually is everybody would support. So actually I think it is the right figure um, and that's why I put the amendment because I think <coughs> it was the wrong figure. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. I'll just say my bit and then you yeah. can you like. Um, so I, I, I don't think we can ascribe uh, any any views to any anybody. Um, <coughs> 
simple attendance at a meeting. Um, uh, I, I, I would agree with Kasler, but I think we, we can agree to 300,000 now. Uh, if there's a need for more, uh, then, then we can um, uh, look at the requirements, look at the evidence, um, and, and uh, look at the potential outcomes. I, I don't think that shuts that in, 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 off at all. Uh, I think our involvement in the in the board, our, our, this, this support in itself, um, does show a commitment um, to uh, um, looking properly at the CAM Metro. It is a combined authority project. Um, uh, and, and, and if and we are we are not in a we we are participating but we're not in a any sense sort of sense an equal partner. Um, I mean that's not how we set up. We're not we're not asking for that. Um, so I, I think the, the recommendation and is, is is perfectly adequate um, for, to, to show our commitment. Um, so uh, would you like to sum up? Um, that's right, so, um, so no, I think I think okay. enough has been enough okay. has been said. Please go to the vote. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, um, voting on the amendment. Uh, who, who, any votes in favour of the amendment? Thank you very much. Votes against the amendment. Uh, the amendment falls, and uh, we can move on to the um, main recommendations. Um, so we, we, that was just on the um, uh, sort of on item C. Uh, is there anything else? Any other comments or questions on um, the the report as a whole, uh, and in particular on the, the recommendations? Um, well, I'm, I, I'm just um, I'm also looking at the forward agenda as well because that effectively gets approved. So. So we've got um, in October, which is our next meeting, um, Campbell to Cambridge and also Histon Road. And then um, are we, you're, we will have, on the West of Cambridge package, will have then have obtained planning permission? No, we will have submitted the plan. You will have submitted then, but, but before that report. Well, not before October, we're saying before the end of the year. Ah, but before the December meeting. So it'll be an update on that. And what else, sorry, I've lost the other page. What else? Um, so we've got a busy time because we've then got um, both of the two routes that we haven't yet had indicative proposals for. So at what level of detail will we have routes for the route from the North Milton Road area to Water Beach and um, the route out. Will we have sort of lines on maps? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we won't. Um, so so we, you, you recognise that these two routes are a little way behind the, the, the first two routes. We're in the uh, process of um, appointing technical consultants to do those route analysis and that will come back to you in terms of the strategic case and in terms of the the broad options and what the next steps will look like around concept. So what, when you say strategic case, in terms of plain person's English, what are we going to get in the December report? Well, it will give you a sense of... So, so the, the A10, the, the dynamic is between Water Beach, um, Cambridge North and Fringe East, uh, Cambridge North uh, Rail Station and the Science Park, so mm -hmm. which, is, which is a complex dynamic in terms of producing one route. So including be, crossing the A14. Including crossing the A14 and then the top of Milton Road. So we will be coming back to the board for a clear steer as to whether you think the principles we've applied are logical, whether you support um, the direction of travel, particularly around input to the Cambridge Northern Fringe East, because that raises a number of, of particular issues, not least one of parking. And um, so we're coming to you in good order before we put a line on the map, because obviously this is yeah. a politically led organisation. In terms of East Cambridge, it is very much around the relationship between an on and off road, what is deliverable on Newmarket Road, and I remember one of the first conversations I had with Councillor Bates in terms of the challenges of, of delivering anything significant on Newmarket Road as opposed to an off-road solution. So again, it will be coming back to you for a, for a clear steer before we get to that point of next steps and lines on maps. Okay, that's very helpful. Thank you. And uh, thanks for the wider report. Anytime. Thank you. Any more comments or questions on this? Okay. Thank you very much. So, um, I, 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 it's, it's really useful. Thank you very much. Thank you. To, to, to the way you've done that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, we, we've now got the recommendations. Um, I, I just would like to check. Um, whether you would like to take the, the recommendations on block or um, block. 
on block. Yes, okay, thank you very much. So uh, we have the, these four recommendations, um, including uh, the contribution to the CAM OVC and the contribution to Project Spring. Um, so uh, could you indicate if you are in favour of these recommendations, please? Thank you very much. That is unanimous. Um, okay. So, uh, and then uh, I think that is everything apart from just a note that the next meeting will be on Thursday, 3rd of October at 4 pm in Campbell. Thank you very much for all the. Uh, yeah. Thank you.